What's going on people? Welcome back to Curtis Shaw TV, back with another live watch along and it is Wednesday night action people, Carabao Cup last 16 business, West Ham against Arsenal from the London Stadium and uh, an opportunity to get to the quarter final if we can win tonight people, it'll be a difficult game um, but one that is winnable and hopefully we will be in the draw sometime this evening. Big up to everyone tuned in. Welcome back to the notorious, the legendary Curtis Shaw TV. Bop, 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 bop. And uh, Carabao Cup action, people. And uh, we have got an interesting starting lineup on the pitch tonight. That is for sure. Uh, make sure you like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. We're in subscriber only mode, which of course is VIP section business, people. Um, are you fit, bruv? Something that I famously asked a certain attacking midfielder. It looks like he's not fit, bruv, because ESR does not make the entire match day squad, which, listen, I've been saying for the last few weeks, man, I've been ESR FC, man, I've been defending his honour. I still want him to stay at the club, but we're going to have to start having uncomfortable conversations um, about some of these players if I'm keeping it a buck. Uh, we haven't got time for this. I said it before and I say it again. An injury-prone player is no good to anybody. It doesn't matter how good you are. Um, let's go through the Arsenal starting lineup. Uh, Aaron Ramsdale plays a game of football for Arsenal. He starts in goal. He is the Carabao uh, Cup goalkeeper, of course. FA Cup probably as well. So Ramsdale gets a game. At right back, it is Ben White, which I'm happy with. I think, you know, we need some experience in there. Kivior and Gabriel play at centre-back. This was what we put in the predicted lineup. One that I got wrong from what I went with. He's gone with Zinchenko at left-back. I put Tomiyasu down in what I would have gone with. But he's gone with Zinchenko, fair enough. I think that's an experienced back five with the keeper and the back four. And I'm confident that that can be strong enough. We go into the midfield. Jorginho, Havertz, Fabio Vieira. I'm going to keep it a book, people. Right? There will be channels. We can dress this up however you want. That midfield. I mean, someone just put it there, actually. That midfield stinks real bad. Like, you need some Febreze for that midfield. You've got Jorginho, who runs like he's got a caravan on his back. You've got Kai Havertz, who's been trick-or-treating for six weeks. He's been ghosting. And then you've got Fabio, who's almost like, you know, the lighter, smaller version of Kai Havertz. Um, you know, he's... I, I just... Listen, if you're in that West Ham midfield today, I, I'm hoping they can roll back the years. Jorginho, Ballon d'Or, passing settings. Um, Havertz, Champions League final goal. And Fabio Vieira... I mean, he played in the Champions League for Porto. Maybe we can get back to that. But I'm not going to lie. We look like a bagel. Pre-kickoff, it looks like a bagel. And you know how much a bagel's got in the middle. Um, but maybe they're going to prove me wrong and I'll shut up at the end of the show. Uh, the front three is the front three we predicted. Nelson, Trossard, Eddie and Ketia. Uh, I'm not surprised with that. Um, Nelson needs game time. Trossard needs game time. He's played excellent. And then Ketia's just scored a hat-trick. And uh, if you're a striker and you score a hat-trick, the last thing on earth you want is to be dropped or rested. Confidence is high, you want to continue to score goals, you're in the groove. The midfield worries me, I'm not going to lie, um, that midfield concerns me. If we win with that midfield, fair play, fair play, um, but I don't like that midfield at all. Um, the Arsenal bench, Hein, Cedric, Tomeyasu, Saliba, Rice, El Elneny, Saka, Odegaard and Martinelli. Of course, for those of you just tuned in, as we said at the start of the show, Emil Smith-Rowe is out with a knee injury. Um, it's a disaster in my opinion. Isn't it crazy, people, that the injury-prone players are always the better player? Oh, I'm, listen, I'm not saying Smith-Rowe is one of our best players, but he's a good player. You know, no disrespect, but it's not, you don't get an injury-prone Cedric or an injury... Well, Nenny's a bit injury-prone, but it's like Partey and Jesus and Smith-Rowe, good players that you would like to be in and around the team. So, are you fit, bruv? He definitely ain't fit, bruv. So, 
I, I'm going to be honest, and, and I don't have any inside info on it, but I'm concerned for Smith Rowe's long term future. Um, it's just not happening for him. It really isn't. And muscular injuries at this stage of your career. Something that I, I saw a debate about uh, a couple of days ago, and this could be true. This could be true. I'm a massive fan of Smith Rowe, and I want to see him succeed at Arsenal. But the reality is this, and this is a great point. Smith Rowe basically missed the whole of last season. He played the odd game, the odd substitute appearance, but he pretty much missed the whole season. And sometimes in football, the reality of the situation is the level moves up and you're not at that level no more. So two years ago, Smith Rowe was one of the best young players at the club. He was close to Saka. Here we go. Saka, I am with Smith Rowe. You miss a whole season of football, 50 games, people will move and overtake you. So maybe now, you know, Saka's way ahead of Smith Rowe. Martinelli's way ahead of him. Saliba's way ahead of him. You know, these we grouped him in that in that set of players. And I think he may have been left behind a little bit, you know, which I, I just... Uh, listen, I know he's still young. He's got time on his side, but it doesn't feel to me like the manager's got a lot of patience with him. We know before he wasn't happy with the way he was living his life and things like that. Apparently he improved that. But the injuries are a concern. It doesn't matter if you're 35, 25 or 18. If you're injury prone you're going to run into problems. So I hope it doesn't keep him out for a long time, but it's a shame because I think he would have definitely started tonight if he'd have been fit. Um, as for the Arsenal team, I mean, I, I spoke yesterday about how I would have approached this game, right? Um, I, I'm, I'm a great believer that Arsenal need to start winning trophies. That's my belief. I've seen a lot of people saying um, it's only the League Cup and, you know, we got bigger priorities and things like that. The biggest priority is the next game of football. Now, I know you can't always do that. And I know people will say, oh, well, you know, for me, Declan Rice should have started. This is basically what I'm saying. I would have started Declan Rice tonight, 100%. I understand Saka. Saka's looked burnt out. He's had injuries. I'm not going to say bigger fish to fry, what a lot of you are saying. That's something you'll never hear me say unless I'm trolling it. Um, I think Declan Rice could have played tonight. It's November. You know, gone till November. Wycliffe's on business, people. Just because she dances, oh no, that don't make her... I won't sing the rest. You know the words. Um... Listen, England have got international duty in two weeks. They've already qualified for the Euros. Why can't you just say to Gareth Southgate, listen, Declan Rice don't need to play the next two games, or at least one of them. I would have played Deckers today and gone with a better midfield. Havertz and Fabio Vieira. Honestly, if they, if they cook tonight, I will hold my hands up. But boy, I am concerned about that midfield. I am very concerned about that midfield. Let's go through West Ham's team, people. West Ham, I'm oh, forever blowing bubbles. Pretty bubbles in the air. Um, Fabianski plays in goal. I mean, damn, I thought Thomas Partey was getting on. How old is Lucas Fabianski? Like, real talk. This guy played for Arsenal about 10 years ago. And I think it is literally probably... It's got to be close to 10 years since this guy left. He went Swansea and that. How old is Lucas Fabianski now? He is 38 years of age. Wow. I mean, come on. Just throw one in your own net for us tonight. Uh, Kufal at right back. Mavropanos. Former Arsenal player who, to be honest, apparently has done really well in Germany. Um, so he'll, he'll have a point to prove. He plays next to Eger, Egerd. I don't know how you say that brother's name, but you know I'm on about. Emerson's at left back. Uh, they're midfield. Alvarez, Suchek and Kudus. So no messing about there. And a front three, Paqueta, Ben Rama and Jared Bowen. I mean, I would say that is probably 80 to 90% of their strongest team. I think Ariola would be in goal ahead of Fabianski. Uh, Mikel Antonio and Ings are both on the bench, so they're not playing with a recognised striker. Um, so I'm not sure, will it be Ben Rama? Will it be Jared Bowen up front? Um, and I think apart from... Oh, James Ward-Prowse. 
Uh, I had to put JWP on the subs bench. I was running out of space. So, yeah, three players away from their strongest 11. So they've certainly got eight of their best 11, I would say, on the pitch. I'm definitely happy that Fabianski's playing and uh, no Antonio, because Antonio is a beast. Um, but that's a, that's a decent team. It's a decent team. Uh, Alvarez, Suchek and Kudus in midfield with Paqueta, you know... That concerns me against a midfield of Havertz, Fabio Vieira, and Zinchenko. Um, let me get my uh, my customary tweet out. I haven't tweeted my thoughts on the starting eleven yet. Um, reasonably happy with the team. Decent team. Not too happy with our midfield. Looks lightweight. Um, good for ESR getting injured again. Let's get this win. Right, there we go. There's there's a tweet. I have to just throw a tweet out, you know what I mean? Uh, right, couple things to talk about. Big up everyone in the chat. Uh, big up Peely, uh, bless Curtis, bro. Hope you're well. Hope you're good, bro. I saw your comment. Um, Selen Ketty sign Olivier Giroud. Giroud's doing well in Italy, isn't he? He's, he really is. Bagel settings. Sky Sports reporting 100 million asking price for Tony. They won't get that for him. There's no chance. Um, there's no way they're getting that much money. It's way too much. Eddie's cat, please. No, nah, who, who's the skipper? Who is the skipper? Salman, like, do you know what? I can't even take full credit. I, I did say... I think... Did I... No, no, I wanted rice. I wanted rice in there. Um, and I wanted um, ESR. So there's a couple. Um, we've got some things to talk about before we uh, sort of concentrate on tonight's game a little bit more. Oh, Jorginho's the skipper, which, again, I, just, I don't like seeing him wear the armband, but then I don't like seeing Enketia wear it, or Odegaard, to be honest. Um, some news, some injury news. And it's not good, Arsenal. It is not good. But you're not going to be surprised when you read it. Um, Gabriel Jesus. Story coming out today, an exclusive. Gabriel Jesus' camp are targeting an Arsenal return to fitness for the beginning of December. Yeah, it's the start of November today. He will not play until the start of December. Let me zoom in a little bit on that um, so you can see it. Um... Jesus is currently taking part in rehab work away from the pitch at London Colney. I mean, makes sense. You don't want him uh, doing rehab on that car park of a training ground. Listen, oh, it's a few weeks. I don't want to put any time on it because, you know, he always somehow gets back sooner. Now, I've read the full article. I've read the full article and we've got a problem on our hands with Gabriel Jesus. Let, let me make this abundantly clear. Now, the reason... They're saying he will be out until December. Is they are now concerned about this knee injury that he sustained last season. Now, usually, anybody who's ever been injured or played football and seen these type of injuries, knee injuries can lead to other injuries. So, gets injured for Brazil, has an operation out for three months, comes back, start of the season, has another operation out for two or three weeks, comes back again injured now to the hamstring has been out for what about 10 days so far he's going to be out for at least another four weeks so you're looking at you know six weeks by the time he comes back from this injury and the manager said oh just a few weeks uh his face looks how i feel that is a banger that's how i felt reading this i i, I keep saying it people i keep saying it uncomfortable conversations or what need to be had at Arsenal about players. Um, Thomas Partey, Gabriel Jesus, Emil Smith-Rowe. I like all three of them, but we got to have serious conversations about these players. Somebody said it best. You say it best when you say enough. I'm going to leave it there, but somebody said it best last week, and I totally agree with this. Gabriel Jesus is now a squad player at Arsenal. And Eddie Nketiah is the number one striker. That's not my choice, by the way. I'm saying that's the reality of the situation. They've swapped, they've swapped places. 
Jesus is hardly ever fit. So even though we go, he's our number one striker, let's see how many league games he plays this season. He, he has become our squad player. And Nketiah is the number one striker. Thomas Partey is a squad player. And Jorginho is now the midfielder that will play in a double pivot with Declan Rice if we decide to play with two natural centre midfielders. So when people say, he's not bad for a squad player, Eddie, he's not bad for a squad player, Jorginho, these guys are not squad players anymore. And that's why I don't rate these guys. If they were genuine backup players, uh, well, I wouldn't be happy, but... These men are starting lineup players for us now. That's the reality. People were giving that transfer window eights and nines out of ten. We're really going to see what it is now. Let me tell you that, people, because we're relying on players that were supposed to be backup players. Um, so this is very sad, you know, because he was he was he was kind of saying in the press conference it could only be a couple of weeks and he might be back sooner and blah blah. He ain't going to be back sooner. He's going to be back next month. The club are now stating that due to the knee injury, due to the fact that he's had two operations now since December, now he's done his hamstring, we've got a problem. I mean, this is like buying something, getting home and seeing that it's damaged goods, but you can't take it back. Pep Guardiola has sold us something that's damaged and we got no refunds. It doesn't matter if you got a receipt. Pep's not stupid. Pep's really not stupid, people. Look at the players he sold. Gabriel Jesus to Arsenal. Good player. Doesn't score enough. Injury prone. Fantastic footballer. He's injured. And doesn't get you 20 goals. Doesn't really hurt him, does it? He bought Alvarez as his backup for 20 million. And he's pr Alvarez probably better than Jesus. Cost half the money and he's cheaper. Pep's not stupid. He sold us a car with a dodgy engine. Sold as Zinchenko. Zinni, oh, I'd do great for you at left back. Oh, yeah, I forgot to tell you, you can't defend. Great on the ball. He's actually a centre mid, but left back, nah, he, not, nah. He's not stupid. This guy ain't stupid. He signed Nathan Ake. Got, I think he got player of the season at left back, uh, in team of the year at left back, sorry. Um, but hey, it is what it is. We are where we are. Pep knows what he's doing. Pep knows what he's doing. We got to go into the market in January. It's as simple as that. We we are not gonna. We can't rely on Gabriel Jesus. Monty said we bought a car off eBay. It's turned up with no wheels on it. There's no wheels. You've got the car, but there's no wheels, and the engine's hanging out. Um, Chris said, you're telling me Eddie is number one. I'm staring at my phone like a dog listening to a high-pitched sound. Not really sure what I'm hearing. Listen, cold hard facts and reality is all we deal with here, people. I'm, it's the reality of the situation. Eddie's number one striker at Arsenal. Ed, Edward, Cheddar Cheese and Ketia. Not Omri, Anelka, Ian Wright, all those guys you grew up on. Van Persie, Adebayo when he was bagging. Bamiang when he was bagging. Eddie's number one, trust me. We will go to the Bernabeu this season with Eddie starting. I'm telling you, it will happen. Um, but hey, it is what it is. Maybe he'll turn into a nutty professor. Maybe he'll find a magic potion and become this proven goal scorer. You never know, people. Um, anyway, let's move on from that. Jesus is out injured. Is anybody surprised? Not me, I'm not injured. Um, I'm not surprised that he's injured. Um, he's a player I like, but... He's he's uh he's constantly injured. Uncomfortable conversations. Two hundred grand a week. Gabriel Jesus injury prone. Thomas Partey two hundred grand a week injury prone. Emil Smith Rowe number ten shirt. Injury prone. What do you do with these guys? I I think some of these some of these guys will get sold. I'm gonna be maybe not Jesus because he bought him. Um. But um yeah it's right. I've got some news. Regarding Emil Smith Rowe, apparently Mikel Arteta has just said this in a pre-game interview. I've got the goal thing going on, so apologies for that. Maybe it's uh, bringing us some luck when the game starts. But um, I'm gonna get you this quote up from uh, Mikel Arteta, and this doesn't sound good either. Sorry to do this to everyone pre-game, by the way. I will get to your super chats after this. This is just in from Mikel Arteta. He said on Emil Smith Rowe's knee concern. He felt something in his knee and started feeling pain after the game. We are assessing him. It's a big worry. I mean, 
I don't like to read too much into words and phrases and things like that. But boy, that does not sound good. It does not sound good at all. ESR, are you fit, bruv? No, you are not. Knee injury for ESR, I mean, you hope it's just a little twinge, nothing major, but any knee injury is a big concern, man. This ain't good. This is not good. It's not good. Not good at all. Going to get to a point where you got to start selling these guys. But the problem is, who wants an injury-prone player? They'll offer you peanuts for him. So what do you do with him? Not good. ESR out with a knee injury. Um, sustained in the game. I mean, the man... First start in 18 months in the league, and the man gets injured. Are you injured, bruv, will be the next question. He might not even be on the um, next uh, tour. <laughs> man said, he's ill, Smith wrote. It's mad. Should have cashed in when Villa offered, says Monty. I mean, listen, English tax, man, they'll keep him. Nia SR, jeez, cast him, that's, that's top notch. That is top notch. Knee SR, you know. I'm I'm here for the uh, I'm here for the dad jokes, I can't lie. Uh we have got around 20 25 minutes till kickoff. Let me get through these super chats. Big up to everyone sending them in. Guna Paul, big see it. Um Eddie has two things in his pocket to get him into this game now. A hat trick v Sheffield United and those photos of Arteta and win the dog. He must have something on him, I'm telling you. He's got some dirt on him. Uh, Lee says, big up, big CC unit business. Big up yourself, bro. Appreciate that, Lee. Flight Mode said, we need a number eight more than we need a striker. Uh, maybe. Yeah, I think both equally. E. Ross said, I'll be gone till December. Ah, oh, dear. Gabriel Jesus settings, eh? Big up English tax, Ross. Um, Yuan Deo said, uh, would it be nice to see Gabriel Magalhães with the armband? I wouldn't mind that. Not Jorginho. The man's ingrained in Chelsea, man. Give it to Gabriel or someone. Brian says, big up, Curtis. Brooklyn bagel settings. Um, if the week three come through, you got to get them up on the green screen. Fingers crossed to squeak out a win. I mean, it's Chuckle Brother settings. It really is. But big up, Brian. Brooklyn in the building. Where Brooklyn at? Big up yourself, bro. Big up, Simon. If we get a striker, Jesus can share back up the striker and Saka. Yeah, that may be his role. I think Jesus ends up becoming a squad player. Um, and Hype says, I don't think Arteta is dumb enough to let this January window be the same as last season. I believe he's learned and will get appropriate reinforcements. One thing that could go against that, even though I agree with you, bro, is how much money will we have to spend? Do we need to sell players is the other thing, you know, and, that, and that's the big question. Um, there, there are a lot of reports we may have to sell before we can spend big. So it depends what the owners are doing. Um, ben Gunnar said it's becoming a joke now whatever the medical staff are up to don't they uh, technology now that detects injuries Zinni in the 8 role I, I would like to see Zinni in midfield you just won't play him there. Three Mouseketeers midfield I'm keeping hope alive said LSU FFP may be an issue we may have to sell um, Dybala would cook in this side I think his opportunity of coming to the Prem is probably gone now uh, big up Joey, who said, uh, big up from South Texas, Big C. Uh, we might clean the house in this midfield by the summer party. We can't rely on this guy. Got to be ruthless. I'm going to be honest with you, Joe. We got four centre midfielders at the moment, natural centre midfielders. Rice, Parte, Jorginho and El Elneny. I would get rid of three of them in the summer. The only one that would be here is Declan Rice. Jorginho out of contract, no way I'm extending that contract, get him out. El Elneny, out of contract, never in a million years am I extending that deal, get him out. Thomas Partey, get what you can for him and get him off the wage bill. That's not because of his talent. On his day, he's arguably our best midfielder. He's 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 about as useful as a, a, a chocolate teapot, as I always say. So get rid of him, get what you can for him, get rid of all three of them and, and bring three new centre mids in, or at least two um because we can't keep doing this we've got to get players in that can stay fit that's the only way you're going to be successful if, if you've got a strong squad that play look at Jurgen Klopp how much his players stayed fit during his successful period only Manchester City can deal with those injuries because their squad depth is so good 
So they lose Kevin De Bruyne for four months. You wouldn't even notice it. Um, because, you know, Bernardo will create. Foden will create. Rodri will create. We can't afford to lose key players. You know, where there's a couple players now that we... I'm not even going to say it, but... You know, one or two more injuries and we're in a lot of trouble. So, listen, let's hope it sorts itself out. Fitz is here. He said, just seeing the team, that midfield is set up for a big L. Bro, listen, man, I look at it like this. I look at it like this, right? All we can do as fans is conversate, give our opinions. We can't dictate who they sign. We can't dictate who they play. I look at it like this. Those three in midfield today cost £112 million, right? £12 million for Jorginho, £65 million for Havertz, £35 million for Fabio Vieira. Jorginho is a Champions League winner. Havertz is a Champions League winner and a Champions League goal scorer. And Fabio Vieira was considered the new Bernardo Silva. These guys need to turn up and perform. He signed all three of them, gave them big contracts. They need to perform. Right, So as much as I, I don't rate any of them free in midfield, I, I don't rate any of them. I'd get rid of all three of them in the summer. But they've got to show what they're about. They've got to. You know, especially Havertz and Fabio, they cost £100 million. We've got to start seeing performances. Otherwise, more uncomfortable conversations. That's £112 million in that midfield. Think about the alternative midfields that you could have bought with that £112 million. It's crazy. So, these guys have got to perform today. I think it'll be a difficult game because Paqueta will get between the lines. Kudus will as well. Alvarez is very aggressive. Suchek's aggressive. I worry about Fabio is quite lightweight. Jorginho. What we need to do is get on the ball. You don't want Jorginho chasing after people. You want him getting on the ball and just passing it quickly and keeping it moving. That's the most you're going to get out of him. So, um, you know, we're going to have to see. We're going to have to see. Uh, LSU said, OK, experimental rotation today. Question, will Arteta throw the big boys on at half time if we're down? It, listen, his back will be against the wall. He's, he's put a strong bench out, right? He could have chosen to have given some of these guys the night off completely. He's put Saliba on the bench, Rice, Odegaard, Saka, Martinelli, and Tommy Asu. The bench is stacked. The bench is absolutely stacked if necessary. So if we're in a difficult situation, yeah, he's going to have to bring people on. And my, my, my feeling yesterday was start Declan Rice just to secure the midfield. Um, but he's put him on the bench. I always felt as a player, you train the day before, you travel... You go on the, you go to the hotel, you go to the ground, you do the warm up. You're sitting on the bench in the cold. You're probably going to come on for 20 minutes at the end anyway. I think Declan Rice might as well have started the game, given us that solidarity. He would have been fired up because it's his former club. And if you're winning the game, you take him off. He's obviously looked at the other way round. Leave him on the bench. Try not to bring him on. Um, so I look at it like this: that midfield is on the manager. If it works. Fair play, it worked. If it goes wrong, there's no hiding place. That's your midfield, they're your free players, and it, it will fall on the manager's shoulders. So, no David Rea on the bench, which is interesting because he is able to play in this competition. Um, but Carl Hine is on the bench. Obviously, Aaron Ramsdale is in goal, which I'm, you know, I'm happy for him. I think he needs game time. He is the cup goalkeeper now, so he's got to make the most of it. Big up Cincinnati for becoming a member. Appreciate that, bro. We will be doing a member stream after, well, during the international break. So, two weeks. Um, Sean Dyche has thoughts on the Arsenal midfield. Well, I'll tell you this, Christopher, mate. You know what I mean? I've seen more middle in my bagel, mate. I can't see anything. Jorginho, he runs like a double-decker bus reversing round a corner. He's running like he's in treacle. Kai Havertz. Neil from the in-between us. I wouldn't go anywhere near him at Everton, mate. He's a disgrace. I'd have him by the throat. Fabio Vieira, mate. I had more meat on my KFC chicken last night than that guy. I don't know how he's had a child. He's got no weight on him whatsoever. So, nah, not for me, mate. I wouldn't have any of them anywhere near the club. Wheat, brick, sweet wood, wheat, concrete. Um, there you go, people. <laughs> anyway, uh, what we got till kickoff? 20 minutes until kickoff, people. 
Watch them run riot. What's your thoughts on the um, on the West Ham team? They've obviously, as I said, three players out of their strongest 11 are not playing. So eight of their strongest 11 are starting. The three they've left out are Ariola in goal. They're playing Fabianski, former Arsenal keeper. Um, Ward Prowse is on the bench. And Mikel Antonio is on the bench. They're not actually playing... Um, with a recognised striker. According to the reports, Jared Bowen is playing up front um, with Paqueta on the right and Ben Rama on the left. We'll see how that works out for them. Um, but they obviously do have Antonio and Ings and Ward-Prowse on the bench. So it, it's, a, it's a strong team from West Ham, but they have lost their last three games. They have rested three key players. Hopefully we can punish them. I'm looking at um, Kufal at right back. I think he can be got at by Trossard. Um, but this won't be an easy game. This won't be. And, and I've been saying for days um, that I, I think Arsenal, not everybody, but a lot of Arsenal fans are sort of downplaying the importance of this. And that's something I really don't understand. I really don't get that. This club haven't won a trophy for three years. I guarantee your most memorable seasons as an Arsenal fan, are the ones where we won a competition. Last season, we had a great season, finished second. I, I, I very rarely sit down and talk about last season. Because last season, to me, even though we played very well for probably 90% of last season, ultimately, we were so close yet so far. I'm not sitting there going, oh, we came second, I'm so happy. I'm sitting there going, wow, if Saliba didn't get injured and we'd sign Caicedo in January, maybe we'd be sitting here as champions right now. We haven't won a League Cup for 30 years. 30 years, people, since we won the League Cup. We haven't won a trophy for three years. Feels like a long time at Arsenal. We're not Tottenham. We're supposed to get trophies on a regular basis. I think a lot of the time we throw the trophies away. That's what frustrates me. Last season against Brighton, we made 10 changes and lost. We went to Man City in the FA Cup, made six changes and lost. Then we got knocked out the Europa League and it was all oh, bigger fish to fry. We're going to win the title. And then we didn't win the title. We left empty handed. Try and win trophies. The problem we're seeing why I probably won't stay live for the draw. The draw is after the Manchester United game. We kick off at 7.30, they kick off at 8.15. So their game will finish around 10 o'clock, where our game will be finished for around 9.15. So possibly I might, I may go live. I could go live again, finish this stream, have a little break, and then maybe go live when the draw is. Let's make sure we're in the draw, first of all. Um, this is a very hard game. I think people have to understand this is a tough, tough game tonight. A um, couple of other things I want to look at before we... Um, Start counting down to the game. 16 minutes until we kick off, people. Um, just to get a bit of context on this competition and why I really believe we should be taking this more seriously tonight. Very disappointed my former club, Mansfield, were knocked out last night, which is a shame because I was hoping they'd win and get Arsenal and then I'd get all sorts of access. But they lost 1-0 to Port Vale. Now, when you look at the teams left in this competition, let's concentrate on the fixtures of tonight. West Ham Arsenal, you've got Chelsea against Black, uh, Blackburn, so I'd expect Chelsea to beat Blackburn at home, although you never know. Liverpool go to Bournemouth, Everton play Burnley, uh, Ipswich play Fulham, Man United play Newcastle at 8 15. Um, so by the end of tonight, it's the quarterfinals. Last night, Middlesbrough and Port Vale got through to the next round, right? And you know, you you could end up tonight, let's say Arsenal get through, I would imagine Chelsea will get through, Liverpool, maybe Everton, maybe Fulham, Man United, Newcastle is probably a flip of the coin. You could get Middlesbrough at home in a Carabao Cup quarterfinal. You could get Port Vale in a Carabao Cup quarterfinal. You brush them aside, you're in the Carabao semi-final. Two legs, anything can happen by then. I, I, I just don't see why, you know, we played Brentford with a much-changed side. Right, we played the young boy on the wing, who and and you know we gave the likes of Declan Rice a, a rest. You play West Ham tonight, which is a tricky game. You're then in the quarterfinal. If the draw goes your way, you're in the semi-final. You've only played a couple games, so 
I just think I would have played a slightly better midfield. The rest of the team I have no problem with. I understand rotation. I understand players can't play 60 games and just play every week. But I would imagine Declan Rice will come on tonight. So in my eyes, why not just start him and try and win the game? Um, but it is what it is. Uh, as I said yesterday, we're in four competitions. One of them's the Champions League. We've never won it. The other one's the Premier League. We haven't won it in 20 years. You've then got the FA Cup and the League Cup. I don't see why we turn our nose up at two competitions that we have a realistic chance of winning when in reality, it's a real long shot whether we're going to win the Champions League or the Prem. And I mean a real long shot. You know what I mean? So, win trophies. Win trophies. We all remember winning the FA Cup, Aubameyang chipping the keeper at Wembley, Chelsea. We all remember Alexis Sanchez scoring past Courtois at Wembley. We all remember Aaron Ramsey's late winner against Hull City. You remember them days. I'll tell you what else I remember. I remember Sergio Aguero lobbing Peter Cech. I remember Oberfemi Martin scoring a last-minute winner. I remember Didier Drogba smashing a free kick past us. Some of them were in the League Cup. So it hurts when we lose these games. So let's take it serious. Win trophies. We're a big football club. I don't like this mentality that, oh, we can only prioritise the league and, and the Champions League. We've got a 25-man squad. We've just spent 210 million. We spent 130 last year, 150 the year before. Go and win this competition. That's a small, small club mentality. We haven't won a trophy for three years. That's too long for me at Arsenal. So, listen, let's win this. Um, let's get to 1K likes before kickoff. Big up, Kippy. 1K likes before kickoff. Can we get there? That's the challenge set. Jared Bowen apparently has scored in his previous three games against Arsenal, which is why, if I'm being honest, I said I would have played Tommy Asu at left back, but then back, um, Bowen could be playing up front, so it doesn't really matter anyway. Um... This is 100% correct. Uh, my dad had it on cassette. Big up, John Leia. Big teams go for everything. Exactly, exactly. We've got no right to, to, to turn down trophies. If we get to Wembley, imagine we're playing Liverpool at Wembley in the EF, you know, in the, I, I just call it the League Cup. Bono, that Carabao, Worthington, Coca-Cola, Milk Cup, whatever they call it. Imagine Arsenal against Liverpool League Cup final at the start of March. That becomes a huge game of football. Massive. We'll be going crazy. So, listen, I'm excited for tonight's game. I really am. I, I'm sick of Arsenal saying, oh, it was a good season. We made progress. What did you win? Nothing. Okay, not interested. Win trophies. Win trophies, people. Um, and another bit of news. We are 12 minutes away from kickoff. And... Uh, Ain't it interesting that a story comes out about Gabriel Jesus being injured and then Brentford apparently throwing this story around tonight. Talk Sports saying that Brentford are determined to resist any January offers for Ivan Tony. The Bees will also demand at least £80 million for Tony come the summer transfer window. Talk Sports sources understand. Uh, the rumour actually says they want a hundred million, but they would let him go for eighty million. Now, that concerns me. That concerns me. I don't think personally Arsenal will pay eighty million pounds for Ivan Tony in a January transfer window. I just don't see it. I haven't seen Arsenal move like that in a January transfer window ever. And, and I understand it from Brentford's point of view. The other day they were saying, oh, you know, 65 million, they won't stand in his way. And I was like, well, that sounds nice. And if that happens, great. But do I think that's going to happen? Probably not. You know, they, um, they're gonna, they've got to protect themselves. They're not having a great season. If you're Brentford, why would you say, yeah, come and take our best player for 60 million, 65 million? I'd say, listen, mate, this guy's one of the best strikers in the Prem outside of your your Haaland's and your, your Alvarez and, and those sorts of guys, I'll be saying, yo, drop 100 million. They're not going to get 100 million for him. What is my concern here? If this just becomes a straight-up financial thing where... Because Brentford know deep down, if the right offer comes in, they will sell him in January. What concerns me is a club like Chelsea will just probably say, we'll give you 80 million. 
That's what concerns me. We saw it with Mudrick. We wanted Mudrick. They just went 88 million job done, no messing around. Chelsea need a striker. If Chelsea just throw 80 million on the table at Tony, the reality is he ends up at Chelsea. He's not going to reject them. He's going to go there because they'll offer him big wages. It's still a very good move for him. I know a lot of us have been saying, you know, offer 50 million plus Eddie. We're in a situation that no matter what we think of Eddie, it's about what the manager thinks of Eddie. And this manager loves that guy. He loves him. He trains well. He comes through the system. He can't say enough positives about him. So it's not looking good on Ivan Tony. I would not get your hopes up on... Um, on, on Arsenal doing that. It could be Daily Doosan again. Do do do. Daily Doosan. I am not getting my hopes up on Ivan Tony becoming an Arsenal player in January. Because if they want 80 million, is there anybody in the chat that thinks Arsenal will spend 80 million pound on Tony in January? I don't see it. I really don't. Um, John said Ollie Watkins. I mean, I still think Ollie Watkins would cost a fortune. He just signed a new four-year contract. Aston Villa are having a good season. They've got money behind them now. They paid nearly forty million for him. So, how if you're Aston Villa and somebody wants Watkins, how much are you going to ask for him? I'm going to say my starting point. If Arsenal called me and I'm the sporting director of Aston Villa, who, as John Layat saying, he is a boiled gooner as well. If I'm Aston Villa's sporting director and Edu calls me for Ollie Watkins, I'm saying, listen, bro, before we even start this conversation, remember you paid £65 million for Kai Havertz. Let's start there. That's what I'm saying if I'm the Aston Villa sporting director. You paid £65 million for Kai Havertz and look what he's done for your team. He's done absolutely nothing. So you've got to go above that before you even talk to me. King Book saying 60 million tops. That he's an England international. He's probably their most important player. He's their top scorer. He just signed a four-year deal. You ain't getting him for 60 million pounds. Not a chance. Not a chance you're getting him for um, 60 million pounds. So we may have to look elsewhere. We may have to look elsewhere when it comes to the strikers. We spoke about Jimenez yesterday from Feyenoord. Benjamin Sesko is being linked as well. Um, but those guys... There is, there is a big risk attached to them. Aston Villa sporting director is Monchi, uh, formerly of Seville. He's no joke. We tried to get him to Arsenal when um, when Emery was 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 with us. So, but Kai won and scored in the Champions League. Listen, we're we're not, we can't keep running off that. I always say, right, that doesn't mean anything to Arsenal. It means absolutely nothing. Kai Havertz scoring a winning goal in a Champions League final for Chelsea means nothing to Arsenal. It hasn't influenced the way he's playing. It hasn't, it's done nothing. It probably actually went against us because Chelsea probably bumped us when we signed him. They were, oh no, he's scored the winning goal in the Champions League. You're going to have to make it 65. It means nothing. It does nothing to help us. Um, Snake Eye said you are killing me. Entertainment and information. You know we don't play, bro. Big up Snake Eyes. Hope you're well. Fitz said to be fair, winning the Carabao Cup didn't help the Manx. It didn't. But do you know what, Fitz? I think that Man United last season were poor. Individual brilliance got them through the season. Rashford scored, what, 30 goals um, in all competition. And... They won a trophy because they got a good run to the final. It's still a positive thing. But, uh, you know, in the league, they were still very shaky. You know, the Ronaldo issue, the Sancho issue. You could see Man United last season was still not a very good team. With Arsenal, we had a good season last year until probably the last seven, eight games when we crumbled. So I think if we have a good season and win a Carabao Cup, it boosts the season. You know, last season, if we'd won the Carabao Cup, you'd be saying... I'm disappointed we didn't win the league, but at least we won a trophy. At least we will look back. In 10 years, you will not look back on the 22-23 season and say, do you remember that 2023 season? What what a season that was. And you'll go, what, what happened? You go, oh, it's the season we bottled the league to Man City. You don't want to remember that season. I tell you what, if you've won a trophy, you'll say, remember when we beat such and such at Wembley and somebody scored a winner? You remember them. You'll always remember Aaron Ramsey's goal against Hull City. You'll always remember Aubameyang chipping the keeper at Wembley. You remember those moments. You know, that's what it's about. Kevin Campbell will tell you, you know, he won the League Cup. I think the last time Arsenal won it. So, 
Cincinnati said Chelsea bully us in the market. It's it's a joke. Real Gunner said Big C, I'd love Arsenal to sign Madueke. I, listen, I don't want any Chelsea players. Unless you're giving me, I don't know, Enzo Fernandez, Caicedo or something. I don't want no one from Chelsea. I'm sick of Chelsea players. We always sign the washed up ones as well. We'll probably sign bloody Thiago Silva next year. Even though he is still a decent player. But, you know, he's about 38 years of age. Um, OJ said, Big C, I just hope Arsenal will give me a good gift as today is my birthday. Big up Cecil as well. Hey, big up OJ, big up Cecil. Yeah, it's his birthday as well. Big up to you, OJ. Uh, a good season, please define, says, um, says Fitz. I mean, everybody has their own reality of what a good season is for Arsenal. A really a good season for me is win the Prem or win the Champions League. But I'm also of the realization that I don't think we're probably good enough to win either one of those because to win either one of those you got to overcome Manchester City. Are we good enough to overcome City? I mean Champions League they could get knocked out by somebody else, Bayern Munich, Real Madrid. But we're still going to probably have to beat a Real or a Bayern or a Napoli or a City over two legs. Unless we get very lucky with the draw, I don't see the Champions League. So to me, the reality, I'm not saying I'd be happy with it, but I think my minimum would be push Man City all the way, finish second and win at least one of the domestic trophies. That would be the bare minimum for me. I'm not saying I'd be singing and dancing. I wouldn't be at the parade, but at least we continue to build and at least you win a trophy, you know? Um, that that would be my minimum, you know? Um, let me get these super chats in. The players are coming on the pitch. Samuel said, uh, I saw Robbie with his entire head painted white and I thought, imagine seeing Kurt doing an Arsenal therapy with his face painted. Information and entertainment, sure sports. Big up Samuel. Yeah, man, I see um, I see Robbie was doing fancy dress and that. I always said, people, to me, Halloween, that's not really my thing. You ain't going to see me dressing up for Halloween. I, I, I know we're here to talk football, but Halloween ain't really something I celebrate. When you really look at it, what is Halloween? But yeah, we'll save that for another time. Big up Samuel. Sky Touche for 70 million. Go get Vlajevic. End of story. But he doesn't want to leave there. He keeps saying it's his dream club. If you're at your dream club, you're not going to be in a rush to leave. He's probably been their best player this season. Um, so I don't think we would get him. Young Gunner, this reminds me of the time Arteta was fantasizing about working under Moyes. That stream was out of control. <laughs> Major pause. Big up yourself. Of course, he played, didn't he, for David Moyes at Everton. So he's always talking about, oh, we'll have a cup of tea after the game. Listen, just beat his team, mate. That's all we're interested in. Uh, big up Young Gunner. I think you've put the same um, super chat in twice, bro. I appreciate it. Um, apologies if that was a mistake. I'm sure it was. Simon said, uh, Santiago Jimenez is our guy. Scored twice against Lazio in the Champions League. Had another one disallowed. Watch him in the return leg. I've been watching him. I've been watching him. The Mexican Haaland, they're calling him. Um, but, you know, there aren't. There's probably no other Haaland in the world, is there? Fit said, Arteta has spent enough money. If he doesn't win the Prem or the Champions League, then him gone. Nearly 700 million spent. Should he be winning titles with that? You would argue, yes. Um, so I hear you, bro, but you know they're not sacking him. You know, that's just not going to happen, is it? They love him. Sports Genius said, these cups are trash. If you don't win, if you win, it doesn't mean you're the best. The only trophy that should be available is the Prem and Champions League. Scrap the rest. While they're there, try and win them, is what I would say. I understand your point. They're not the same as the top two, but I don't think they're trash. Ask a Tottenham fan what they do for a League Cup right now. They'd run for a brick wall for it. I think Wenger started to change the mentality in English football that these trophies don't mean anything and top four's a trophy and all of that, you know. I still think you've got to win competitions, lift silverware, go to Wembley and win things. Anyway, people, we are a minute until kickoff. Lucas said Fitz kicking the door off before kickoff. Um, give me your score predictions. The players are on the pitch. Declan Rice sitting on the subs bench saying hi and hello to everyone. Mohamed Kudus, Paqueta... Ben Rama, Jared Bowen, that is a dangerous front four, I'm going to be honest. Um, I'm going to be honest, their midfield against our midfield is going to be a problem. I'm going to go for 2-1 to Arsenal, but I'm going to be honest, 
It could be a it could be a difficult night. I believe it goes straight to penalties, no extra time. So let's see how we get on. Give me your score predictions in the comments. Lucas Paqueta to get the game underway for West Ham as the bubbles flow around the pitch. Arsenal playing in that yellow kit, which I still don't particularly love. But maybe I'm getting old. You know, Cruz has got that kit and he does wear it quite well, to be honest. Um, he's got it on now, actually. We're underway, people. Uh, Beresford says 3-2. Big up laser gaming. Come on, Arsenal. Fitz takes no prisoners. None at all. Pele says 2-0 uh, to Ar uh, Arsenal. Saliba says 1-0 to Arsenal. Tactic says 3-2. Jason says I think he'll go to penalties. Jay saying 2-1 to the Gunners. Usman said Saeed said Jared Bowen is better than Rashford. He's completely done a 360 on Rashford now, hasn't he? Like he can't stand him. Um, 3 0 West Ham says Dre. Kudus and Paquette are players we should have. Well, all summer we were linked with Kudus and never got him. Paquette, I still don't understand how West Ham got him. He was being linked with all sorts of clubs, including us, and we never got him. This guy, Edu, has got all these links in Brazil. When have we actually benefited from it? He never signed Martinelli. That wasn't his signing. He signed Marquinhos, who is on loan doing nothing. So I thought we were supposed to... I mean, Gabriel. I give him some credit on Gabriel Magalhães. I mean, Gabriel Jesus, the brother's injury pro. And he was... So I want to see Paqueta. I want to see them kind of players come into Arsenal. Uh, Kai Havertz Brace says, uh, Jay, listen, if that happens, mate, I'll get his name on the back of a shirt. He ain't. He'll be lucky to have two shots on target. Martinelli was not Edu signing, by the way, Tom. He was. He didn't buy him. Um, Mavropanos playing at centre back, former Arsenal centre back. He's a giant. Wasim said Havertz scores tonight. Clip it. We say it every game. Oh, Havertz will score tonight. Big game. Havertz gonna get his goal. And by the end of it, we're like, actually, he's not going to get a goal. He ain't, even, he ain't going to do anything. But I hope he does. Come on, Kai Havertz. Prove us wrong, people. Let's do a like count before we um, start to talk uh, through the game. I'll, I'll you know, try and get some commentating um, for people who can't watch it. Um, what's the like count? We are at 800 likes, people. Come on, let's get 1,000 likes ASAP. 3,000 of you in the chat. Here is Kai Havertz. On the left-hand side, Trossard on the left. Trossard with a poor pass. He gets away with it. Jared Bowen is playing up front. Ben Rama's on the left. Kudus is on the right uh, for West Ham. Uh, Juan said, as a Mexican, Santi Jimenez is good and promising, but he's still ripe. Arteta would develop him. It's interesting. Got a bit of... Uh, quite a few people message me about... Um, um, Santiago Jimenez yesterday. So thank you, everyone, who gave a bit of insight. Here is Trossard, left-hand side. Gets a cross in the box. Cleared away. And uh, see, the good thing there, I mean, Kivior does well there, is um, with Jared Bowen playing through the middle, he's not going to probably win too many headers from, like, goal kicks and stuff. Ball over the top. Finds Trossard, left-hand side. Mohamed Kudus, as soon as Trossard gets the ball, he's sprinting over to double up on him. Jermaine said the legendary scout, Kagi Sao, made the club sign Martinelli, scouted Saliba and Gabriel as well. There you go. Yeah, we're not giving um, Martinelli credit to Edu. He did not sign him. West Ham in possession. Ben Rama. This is going to be a, a good game, by the way. Not an easy game either. Make sure um, if we get any score updates in the other games, throw them in the chat. I know the Arsenal game is the early kickoff tonight. So, obviously, Manchester United won't start until half-time in this game. Uh, Bournemouth, Liverpool, Chelsea, Blackburn, Everton, Burnley and Ipswich, Fulham. They kick off in 12 minutes. West Ham in possession. They've started bright. Mohamed Kudus, good ball. Into Paqueta. We're in trouble. Three against three. West Ham on the attack. Paqueta over. Hits the pass. Jared Bowen made the run. That was not good there. And this is what I'm saying. Our midfield um, is very sluggish. Gabriel gets bullied there by Paqueta. Jorginho actually was sprinting back. Fair play to him. The problem you have is Zinchenko gets so far forward there that it leaves a lot of space down that left-hand side for us. But we got away with it there. Um, here's Kai Havertz. Finds Eddie and Ketia. Trossard. 
who had, I thought had a brilliant substitute appearance the other night um, against Sheffield United, or the other day, I should say. And uh, he looked really lively. He needs to prove his point. Mark Brinkley said, first time watching the game and listening to you. Normally just listen when I can't watch the game, but it's addictive watching and listening. Keep it going, mate. Appreciate that, Mark. Little touch there by uh, Fabio Vieira, and uh, it's cleared by uh, Mavropanos, I think that was. Goes out for a throw-in on the halfway line. In fact, it's uh, a a good, a good or Aguirre. How do you say that brother's name? I don't know. Um, I think I used to call him Agod. I don't know how you say his name. He's French, isn't he? Aguirre. Aguirre. Probably something like, just work with me on that. I'll probably butcher his name. Um, I believe he plays for Morocco, does he, or someone? Let's have a look. Sounds like a, a French... Oh, Moroccan, yeah. Right, here's a chance. Reese Nelson hits the byline, pulls it back. Oh, cleared away. Tried to pick out Eddie. It's actually been given as a free kick. That was lively from Reese Nelson. I've always said with... Um, oh, good ball, Ben White. Nelson, see you later. He gives a foul. I hope Eddie hasn't stamped on him there, you know. Nah, he's just, he's just caught him. They're singing the Kai song. Ah, oh, it's, it's shameless. Um, oh, God. <laughs> Aguirre. Aguirre. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get through it. It could be a long night with that name. Uh, Gabriel Magalhães wins the header. Finds Eddie. Good header. Here is... Uh, oh, good footwork. Havertz. Havertz and Havertz like Fabio Vieira. He's like his little brother. Here's Inchenko, who's basically in midfield. Keep the ball. We've got to keep the ball. And, um, you know, we don't want the likes of Jorginho doing a lot of running. You'd rather him in possession. Playing forward. Here's Zinchenko. Goes over the halfway line. West Ham are pressing us high up the pitch. Very difficult to um, to get out um, against this West Ham lineup. Like I said, West Ham don't have an out-and-out -out striker. Jorginho, good ball into Enketia. Kudus again. As soon as the ball goes, oh, I should have given that to Havertz, man. Oh, Zinni, come on. Sloppy play there. Well done, Havertz. Although they don't win it. Good play, Havertz. Oh, he's done well. That's a free. Well done. Well done, mate. He's done well. Um, Alvarez, who is a very aggressive midfielder, kind of bullied Fabio Vieira there. Poor pass by Zinni. Havertz twice here. Comes across. Oh, it was Jorginho getting bullied. Gets his body in the way. Wins the free kick. Good cross in position this as well. So fair play to Havertz. It, that's what they tell me. If you can't see what Havertz does off the ball, you don't understand football. That's what they say. Maybe we should play him defensive midfield. In swinging free kick. Reese Nelson to take it. Can we get an early goal? We've got height in there. Do you know what I'd love here? A little Havertz flick on into the far corner. He's at the edge of the six-yard box. Nelson whips it in. Havertz! Oh! Tipped over the bar by Fabianski there. <laughs> Nearly. I'm telling you, Neil from the in-betweeners. Good flick on at the near post. If it's either side of the keeper, there's a chance it goes in. He heads it straight down the middle. Fabianski tips it over the bar. Are you seeing the light with Havertz? He's a good player, says Cardo. Listen. One flick on and a free kick ain't enough to see the light. I need to see a lot more. I want to see production. In swinging corner for Arsenal. Can we go a goal up? It's whipped in by Fabio Vieira. Headed away at the near post by Suchek. West Ham might hit us on the break. Don't foul him. You ain't got to foul him, Reese. Well done, Reese Nelson. Superb, Reese Nelson. Good pace, good strength. Brushes Ben Rama off the ball. And wins it back. Arsenal made a decent start. Here's Fabio Vieira. Can we test Fabianski a little bit more? Kivior, who is playing on the right-hand side. People were like, oh, you can't play with two left-footed centre-backs. You can. We see enough um, centre-back pairings where they're both right-footed. We can get away with it. Gabriel's on the left. Kivior's on the right. Um, and that should be a throw into Arsenal. Ben White does well there. Wins it off Ben Rama. What? Ah, that's cheeky from Ben Rama. Throws the other ball on the pitch. Should that not be a yellow card? He knows we're going to take the throw in quickly. So he puts another ball on the pitch and the ref has to stop play. That's rude. He should have got booked for that. I'm quite happy with the start we've made, but it'd be nice if we can go 1-0 up, you know? 
Ben White and Nelson on this right hand side. Oh, ben White, man. You can see he's offside. It goes out for a goal kick. Fabio Vieira is about three yards offside. Ben White decides to pass the ball to him. Um, and it goes out for a goal kick. Nine minutes gone. We've started the game fairly well. But it's always nice to try and get an early goal. Um, which would be good. Um, Havertz again battling away. And he wins another free kick on the halfway line. Um, Kai Havertz feeling one to Listen, I'd love him to score. I'm sick of being critical of him. Um, Arsenal in possession again. We're getting lots of the ball, which is positive. It's just we need to we need to try and score. Is Gabriel Magalhães needs players to come and get it? Eddie and Ketty are shocking first touch. Got to do better than that. We win the ball back though. Kivior, I actually think you know Kivior. There's potential in Kivior. I think I think there could be a player there. Is Zinchenko. We're dominating the game so far. Trossard again doesn't give it to Havertz, who makes a run. Trossard, ah, that's the wrong cross. Tries to ping it to the back post. Goes out for a goal kick. Peter says, big up Cruz. Big up Cruz. Just come back from training. Yeah, H said, I see the potential. South London's fine. said, I agree. Trust me, man. I think Kivior, tall, left-footed, looks quite comfortable in possession. I don't think he's the finished article. Um... You know, it will it will take some time to develop him, but I do think there's a player there. Goal kick to uh, West Ham, Fabianski and Mavropanos, two former Arsenal players playing for West Ham tonight. Fabio Virier struggled a little bit so far, but we're early in the game. Hopefully he can grow into it. Throw into West Ham just inside the Arsenal half. Maybe this can be Havertz's breakout game. Uh, Escobar said Havertz is invading Spain. He started the game all right, you know. He's good off the ball anyway. We just need more more on the ball. Uh, Paqueta gives the ball away. Here's Reese Nelson. That's a throw into West Ham there. What you need is Nelson in 1v1 situations with Emerson. He, he, I, I do think Reese. you know, he's sharp, he's quick, he's direct. If you can get him 1v1, he'll do bits. Guna Paul said Havertz gets a goal or an assist. I'll get him on the back of a shirt and dedicate one of my five aside goals to him. We're waiting, aren't we? Kiwi Esther. Kiwi Esther, you know. And uh, Usma said he's rapid for a centre back. West Ham have possession. What's noticeable straight away is we're not pressing as high as West Ham are. When our defence gets the ball, they're trying to put us under pressure. We're not really doing the same. Eddie will press a little bit, but no one's really going with him. 12 minutes gone, nil-nil. Fabianski on the ball. Look, we're kind of allowing them to play long. Maybe because they don't have an out-and-out -out striker. As you can see there, Kivio just eases, eases Jared Bowen off the ball. And the ball goes back to Aaron Ramsdale, who's under pressure. Gabriel's under pressure. You've got to be careful here. Overplayed. Wow, he gives the throw in to West Ham as well. It's frustrating. Kudus presses there and wins a throw. Did you see the Leon incident? Yeah, I saw that. Leon against Marseille. I think they threw stones at the bus, didn't they? Uh, Kufau. Looks like he's going to put a long throw in here for West Ham. We've got to defend this. It's flicked onto the back post. Ben White does well to clear it. <clears throat> Nelson does well there. Go on, Reese. Drive. He's got three players on him. Have a run. Go on. Eddie, you've got to make the box, mate. He's ran 90 yards. He could do with someone to cry. He loses it. Ben Rama's done really well there to keep up with him. Rams, hey, Ram, like I said, man, I want to win this competition. He said it's a plastic cover. I want to see us win it. West Ham starting to get a little bit of momentum now. Here's Kufau. Well done, Trossard. Forces it for a throw. Um... Kivior isn't a centre-back. I bet he ends up playing left-back. Maybe inverted. People saying the second goal on my intro is offside. Miles onside, people. No VAR. Might have been slightly off, but I prefer to concentrate on the Burkamp S chip. Um, anyway, let's continue. Throw into West Ham. West Ham. 
Um, Kufau, he's got a long throw, by the way. Nelson loses out there. Even though we started the game well, you know, we haven't really... The, the header from Havertz was the only chance we've created. West Ham have been quiet. Is Ben Rama left-hand side up against Ben White? Remember, we do have a strong bench tonight. Saka Martinelli. Oh, long ball over the top there. Gabriel has to flick it out. He's not happy. He's swearing at someone. See, looking at this, it's nothing more than just a clip into the area. Gabriel. I mean, to be fair, he has to flick it. Because the guy's behind him. What's he supposed to do? Maybe he wants to... He looks like he's having a go at Zinchenko. Zinchenko, maybe he hasn't communicated with him there to say, you know, there's a man behind you. When Zinni's not exactly known for his defending, is he? Jared Bowen in swing and corner. Own goal. Oh, my days. Ben White. Ben Tan scores an own goal. You just... Uh, God, it's a plastic cup. I never wanted to win it anyway. Pathetic. That is absolutely... You just... You don't want to win trophies, do you? Ben White, mate, ever since you've dyed your hair, you've been a shocker, mate. Joey Essex heads it into his own net. The first opportunity. I mean, J Jared, somebody's pulling Ramsdale's shirt off. Suchek, he's pulling his shirt off him. Ben White, mate, what on earth is that? I don't even know if there's... Is there VAR? Is there VAR? I actually don't know. Oh, Ben White. That is absolutely shocking. He knows it, man. Jesus. You've been on that. You've been on the... Uh, no VAR? No, nah, we're done. One nil down. Yeah, no VAR. Pathetic. Absolutely shocking goal to concede. We're on the attack. Fabio Vieira clips over the top. Havertz! Oh, what is that? I shouldn't even be surprised. Oh, man. I never rated this cup competition anyway. <laughs> oh, dear. That is... That's just a shocking goal. Oh, dear. Well, I did say 2-1 to Arsenal, so... We do need to cut. Oh, I've put 1 0 to Arsenal. Apologies. I'm so used to us winning lately. Um, yeah. Ben White own goal. Terrible. First attack, a corner flicked into our own net. Enthusiasm levels have dropped. But, long way to go. I believe there's no extra time. It goes straight to penalties. Here's Fabio Vieira, who's had a quiet start to the game. Oh, Reese Nelson right hand side. Oh, he's got a cross it there. The shot's blocked. What is that? Kivior, don't foul him. He's going to foul him. He fouls him. I, I just said this guy's got potential. He's got potential as a twerker like his missus, mate. Not a centre back. If you're doing things like that, don't foul him. He's going towards his own goal. He's going nowhere and you're kicking him down. Merry Christmas, people. Yeah, I told you. We are Santa Claus FC. Holidays are coming. Holidays are coming. Da -da 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 -da. We are like the Coca-Cola lorry that drives through at Christmas time all lit up. If you're struggling, Arsenal will turn up. Look at the form books, people. Look at the form books. Everton beat them 1-0. Everton, you know. Olympiacos beat them. Villa beat them. Newcastle drew. And we turn up. Here, mate. Have an own goal. Ben Tan heads one into his own net. No VAR for the foul on the key. You might as well foul people in the penalty area because if the ref don't see it, you're going to get away with it. <sighs> 19. It's going to be a long night, man. It's going to be a long night. You can just tell, innit? It's Arsenal. Six changes, no midfield. Let's see. That midfield was always a concern for me. Um, but we'll see. Eddie has not been involved. I told, it's great scoring a hat-trick at the weekend. You've got to follow that up with 
you know, more good performances. Here's Zinchenko. Good ball into Havertz. Hit it! Oh, shoot! Jeez, the guy just don't want to shoot. Great ball from Zinni. Here's Trossard. Finds Havertz. He's touched it out for a goal. I want my money back. He's used... Oh, look at that first touch. I, sometimes I have to stand up. They're putting up stats of what he did at Chelsea. He's a joke. I just want my money back. That's all I want. I want a decent player. He's 25 yards out and don't shoot. He hasn't scored from open play all season. Jorginho, wow, he's lucky to get a free kick. Alan Smith said Kai can do damage. He can do damage to our team, not their team. I have to stand up and just clear my mind when I see Havertz do things like that. 25 yards out on his left foot with a couple yards of space to pull pull the trigger and he tries to pass and then he the ball comes back to him and it bounces off him and goes out for a goal kick. Come on, man, please. Havertz playing okay, stop the agenda, mate. We've been saying that for 10 weeks. Come on, man. 21 minutes gone. Kivio wins the header. They're on us now. Look, Jorginho is on the wrong side of Paqueta. Jared Bowen. Oh, well done, Gabriel. Ramsdale kicks it long. Jeez. And Ketio. I just don't understand this. I really don't understand this. And the crazy thing is now, for all that starting lineup, guess what? He's going to have to bring these guys on anyway. You probably end up bringing on Declan Rice and bringing on Saka. So it's not like they're getting a night off. They're going to end up coming on. Alfred said, is VAR not in this tournament? Ramsdale was clearly being pulled. When Ben White fouled a keeper, they was all over it. In the, I think until the quarterfinals or the semifinals, they don't use VAR in the uh, Carabao Cup. So you might as well just pull the goalkeeper shirt and get away with it. Zinchenko on the ball. Big up Alfred. Big up Concept. Why haven't we got a youth striker on the bench? No alternative to Eddie. It's a, it's a good point. Oh, Fabio Vieira. Good skill. Wins a free kick. Good cross in position, this. Can't believe we scored an own goal. Ah, oh, dear. You would think, wouldn't you, that... With the... I mean, the, the Premier League and the EFL are separate companies, so obviously it costs money. Um, to pay for VAR. But VAR can't be that expensive. It's four ex-referees in an office looking at a screen and giving a foul. Or is it that expensive? Like, are them man asking for 50 grand each? They probably get a couple grand or whatever. So I don't understand why they can't use VAR at this stage of a competition. It makes no sense. Free kick to Arsenal. Can we get our own back from a set piece? Nelson whips it in. Headed on by Ben White, and uh, it's tipped over the bar by Fabianski for a corner. He's invading space. 3K locked in. Great support. Really appreciate it. Let's check the likes. Where are we at? Surely we're at a, we must be beyond 1,000 likes by now. That should be absolute light work. We are at, yeah, we're at 1,000 likes. Big up. Let's let's push towards 3,000 people. Just, just lick the like button quickly, people. And uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Big C, you can't, bruv. I mean, not really. Nelson, in swinging corner. It's a good ball. Flicked on. Oh, just wide. Eddie and Ketty are at the near post. Good chance. That's not a bad chance, you know. He's, yeah, I mean, it's unlucky. He's got to wrap his, ah. Uh, don't quite get here. Yeah, side netting. Decent chance that I'd expect him to hit the target. They don't have the brown envelope money for VAR. It's a shame that. Look, Declan Rice warming up. Probably end up coming on at half-time. Might as well have started him and tried to win the game. 
Kudus pushes Jorginho over. West Ham fans fuming. He gives a free kick. But Big C Havertz trains well, says Gouda. Um, Gouda Paul. Yeah, oh, you don't see what he does on the training ground. He can't stop scoring. He's like R9 on the training ground. I said, at what point do we call the cavalry? Well, that's interesting, isn't it? You know, how long does he wait? Because you know at some stage he's going to have to bring Saka and Rice on and Odegaard. Because um, that midfield is struggling to create anything. Um, Arsenal have possession. West Ham, of course. Energy levels are up now. They're pressing. They literally, West Ham, have not created anything until they got that corner. And we end up scoring an own goal. Here's Zinchenko finds Eddie. Come on, hold the ball up, bro. you got to be stronger than that. Gets bullied off the ball. Is that Mavropanos? Look at this. He's a giant. He's ran all the way to the other side of the box. He's won a corner. Look at him. Mavropanos, he's a giant. He's like six foot five. Bullies Eddie and Ketia. Runs all the way to the edge of our box and wins a corner. Not good enough, man. Not good. Oh, but... We've got brilliant squad depth now. I'm so glad we had such a great transfer window. Remember all those 8 out of 10s and 9 out of 10s in the summer? Remember? Oh, we've got great squad depth. We can make multiple changes. Does it look like it? £112 million midfield. Non-existent. It's up in the air again at the back post. Ramsdale clears it. Referee gives a free kick. Ramsdale's trying to square up to Suchek now. It's a free kick to Arsenal. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. Um, Peter says, come on, Kai's transmitting Arteta on the field. Hybrid's local badger. I never wanted Jorginho, Kai Ava, Zinni, Ben White, Ramsdale, Kivio, Rea, Fabio, Nelson and Ketty. The list goes on. You cannot tell me Arteta is an Arsenal fan. It's all PR. The man is Barca. <laughs> Yo. Ooh, Ramsdale hit his back on the post there. No wonder he squared up to Suche. These lot are naughty, man. I'm telling you, dark arts. These men know there's no VAR. The ref's probably not going to see a lot of them little things. They'll get away with it. Ramsdale's being pressed here. Finds Inchenko. Oh, risky, but we've got away with it. Nelson's been all right. He's been a bright spot, but there's not enough players playing well here. No, look, Kivior gets clattered by Jared Bowen, goes out for a goal kick. They're up for it. They want to win a trophy. Moyes won a trophy last season. He wants more. You know? We we look um We don't look as up for it. That that you know what West Ham are gonna do. We're looking that Antonio's not up front. He'd be roughing man up even more. Ben White scored Dre. Own goal. Corner whipped in. Ben White flicks it into his own net. West Ham roughing us up now as well. Jared Bowen clatters Kivior there. And he did win the ball. You turn up with a midfield of Jorginho, Kai Havertz and Fabio Vieira against West Ham in a physical battle. You don't need to be a rocket scientist to understand what the outcome's going to be. You know what I mean? It ain't, it ain't going to take long, is it? Jorginho can't run. Havertz is flimsy and Fabio's even flimsier, you know? Free kick on the halfway line. We actually started the game quite well, but... We haven't created anything since that header we had in the first few minutes. Jorginho on the ball. West Ham not playing with an out-and-out -out striker, but they are pressing. Every time we have the ball. Move the ball quicker. Too slow, Gabby. Too slow. Should have given that to Jorginho. Here's Ben White. West Ham pressing us. We're forced all the way back to Ramsdale. He'll end up smashing this up front. <clears throat> Too slow. What Something that I've noticed so much about Arsenal over the past month in particular. We play so slow. We pass the ball to someone, that guy will slow down on the ball, look for a pass. Look, pass, Kivior, standing still. Ben White, standing still. There's not enough movement, and it's too slow. It's too easy to play against. 
Would I take Anthony at Arsenal? Absolutely no chance I would take him. I'd rather take Sancho than Anthony. He is a horrible player. Zinchenko, it's a poor pass. Sells Jorge. Jorginho there just got Zinni out of a big mess. Come on, can we attack? Eddie and Ketia. Finds Fabio Vieira. Can we create something? Nelson, right hand side. He's got support. Clips it to the back post. Mavropanos wins the header. Six foot five, man. The guy's a beast in the air. Don't foul him. Kufal clears it. That is way too easy. Where's our pressing? We are weak in midfield. Here's Nelson. Wins the ball back. Reese Nelson. Right foot shot. Deflected. Goes out for a corner. Come on, man. Got to do more. Nelson looks bright. Nelson looks bright. This midfield is a major concern. Major. Corner to Arsenal. We are so slow. But a lot of the fan base wanted this. A lot of the fan base should not be moaning tonight because a lot of them were saying, make multiple changes. Put this team out. Put this team out. It'll be good enough to win. It won't be. It won't. West Ham are a good team. They're a physical team as well. In swinging corner, Fabio Vieira. Flicked on all the way across. Goes out at the back post. It was Havertz. Ah, dear. I mean, it was a little bit high. Edge of the six-yard box, so he's not that far out if he makes a better connection. Eight out of ten window, they said. Eight out of ten window. Yeah, listen, Reese Nelson's been our brightest player, in my opinion. He's direct, he's quick, and, um, you know, he's having a go at his fullback, but the team are not playing well at the moment. We started the game quite bright, but we've got to step up. The, the thing what's frustrating me at the moment is there are players in this team that should be desperate to get into the Arsenal first team. Because let's be honest, this ain't our first team. Some of them are, but your Kivios, your Jorginho's, your Havertz, your Vieira's, your Nelson's, Trossard, and Ketia's even got to establish himself while Jesus is injured. These guys need a performance. Good flick by Havertz. Finds Fabio Vieira. He's going to get bullied. No, he's done well there. Finds Trossard. Look, Trossard's got the ball there. Two players on him straight away. West Ham are running their socks off. Here's Jorginho. Get the ball to Nelson. He's the bright spark at the moment. Here is Reese. He's got two players on him. West Ham are getting behind the ball straight away. The only way you can damage that is by moving the ball quickly. You catch them out. Um, ball over the top. Here's Trossard back post. Scoops it up in the air. It's high. Havertz, you're not even looking at the ball. He's not even looking at the ball. I'm sorry. You can't defend the undefendable. You can't, man. I'm, I'm, I've tried so many times. Genuinely, at the moment, one of the worst signings I've ever seen at Arsenal. The ball's in the air. The guy's six foot three. Instead of going up for an honest challenge, you might be able to knock it down to someone in the area. He stands there and just not... He's, the ball's above him. He ain't even looking. And he just barges into him. Absolutely insane. They're just showing you the replay of Ben White's goal. Ramsdale seems to run up to the ref and say, bro, he's pulling my shirt off. Check VAR. And the ref's saying, bro, there ain't no VAR. We ain't got no money for this. Willian worse. Dre, I think Willian was better. Willian scored a free... No, was it a free kick? He scored a banger on his debut at Fulham. All right, after that, it went downhill rapidly. But this guy cost 65 million, bro. This guy's worse. At least William was during lockdown. We never had to watch him in a, um, in a stadium. Come on, Arsenal, man. Step it up. He's got to make changes at half time. Got to. You've got to bring some of the cavalry on. Which is what I'm saying. You might as well... You might as well have took it. You might as well have started with Rice in midfield. Can't turn up with this midfield at West Ham, man. They're physical. Edson Alvarez, aggressive player, former Ajax player. Suchek, just a strong player, you know, aggressive. Paqueta's quality. He nearly went to Man City for like 80 million. You can't turn up against them with 
a midfield that can't physically mix it with them. Here's Reese Nelson, who's been our best player, in my opinion. Fabio Vieira. Trossard. And you can see, when we get the ball out wide, we don't want to cross it. Because they're obviously thinking, oh, and just as I say that... Oh, my God. Have <laughs> Yo! He's the... Yo, honestly. People, are you seeing the first touch, man? It's... Whoa! I don't even know what to say, bro. The ball bounced off him. It was like a trampoline. Honestly, my eyes are watering. He's got Timberland boots on. It's Lukaka. Uh, no, did you just see that first touch? The ball got whipped into him back post. It bounced off his foot and went into the keeper. I don't know what's going on here, man. I don't get it. I genuinely think that is Neil from the in-betweeners. Zinchenko's got the ball. That was wild. Trossard has not had 1v1 on Kufal the whole night. Kudus running is ridiculous how quick he gets back to double up on him. That was wild. I, 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 was he clearing the ball? Here's Nelson, right hand side, cuts inside. Go on, Reese. On his left foot, Nelson, shots blocked. Ben White, edge of the box. Can he make something of it? Ah, he's going to have to start again, Nelson. Nelson's lively. I'm enjoying his performance. Come on, Zinchenko. Oh, I tried to find Havertz. Kudas on the break. His work rate is unbelievable. Kufal, Sufal is it? Loses the ball. Looks like a lost puppy for real. Definitely does. Um, come on, also have the ball back. Here's Zinchenko in the West Ham half. Gets the ball out wide. Trossard loses out. And uh, it's a throw-in, edge of their box. Kuda should be playing. He was cheaper than Havertz. Come on, Havertz, man. Please do something. This is wild. Absolutely crazy what we're seeing. Why is that vibrating so much? Apologies if you can hear that. The mic's shaking around tonight. Um... This is the lowest of low blocks. Listen, what do you expect? They've lost their last three games. We can't moan about it. We spent 200 million. We should be able to find a way to unlock it. Kuda should have been for us. I'll never understand the sign. He's got to do something, please. Here's Ben White. Finds Jorginho. How much do you bet Arteta takes Nelson off first? He probably will. Trossard, what a ball into Zinchenko. Whips it in. Eddie and Ketia puts it over the bar. Not the easiest of chances. It is on the volley. But um, what a ball by Trossard. Zinni does well. Great run by Zinchenko. Look, no one picks him up. Great ball, Trossard. Flicks it in. And Ketia, ah, he volleys it over the bar. Got to do better. Um... That's not great. It's not great. Get Rice, Odegaard, and Martinelli in. Well, we're gonna have to, aren't we? We're gonna. We're not gonna get through a ninety. Here's Mohamed Kudus for West Ham. Listen, they are defending. It's a ridiculous low block. Although they're on the attack now, and they've got four or five players forward. Ben Rama. On the edge of the box, he goes backwards. It's David Moyes' football, man. He goes one nil up. He'll be happy to defend that. At the end of the day, when you're 1-0 up, if you can keep a clean sheet, you win the game. David Moyes will look for that. Siddons back, he said. Havertz not even championship level. We'll swap you for Jamie Vardy, bro. We need a proper striker so bad. Yeah, totally agree. Totally agree, man. We need way more. Way more than what we've got. Arsenal win the ball back. Jorginho, move the ball quicker. Reese Nelson. Come on, make a run. Have a shoot. Oh, Trossard, left-hand side. Again, Kudus comes across straight away. Trossard with a horrible pass. Oh, ref. Kivior barges into Jared Bowen. and referee gives a free kick. Not good. Not good. Havertz is a pyramid scheme. Complete fraud. Oh, dear. Oh, everyone's crying online about the foul to um 
to um, Ramsdale, but there's no VAR, people. It, they would have been told before the game there's no VAR. Um, so what are we going to do? We're going to cry about it? The ref didn't see it. Why don't we do it to their keeper? We're too nice, you know? We're too nice and soft, weak midfield. Um, five minutes until half time, people. Disappointing first. Oh, Kivy or get the ball down and play it back to Ramsdale. Don't put it out for a throw. You're now sitting here at the end of the half and you're going, what's the point in that? You know what I mean? It's a waste of 45 minutes. I said this in the week. You turn up here and get beat, what's the point of it? And you probably end up having to bring on Rice and then man anyway. And then it hurt your confidence because you've lost the game. I just, I don't know, man. I don't get it. I, I would make uh, I would make changes at half time. Ball over the top, looking for Zinchenko. He's under pressure. Does well in the end. Goes out for a goal kick to Arsenal. Boring first half. Boring. Slow. Typical of Arsenal over the last few weeks. We're slow in possession. We're not creating enough. I don't understand. You get the ball 25 yards out and you're in space and our players don't shoot. We do not pull the trigger. The only thing I can think he's not bothered about this competition. I genuinely don't think he is. Um, which would be a shame. Long ball by Ramsdale. Everyone online will go, oh, Ramsdale was fouled. And he was. I'm not arguing that. But if you know before the game that there's no VAR, which the players would have been told before the game there's no VAR. You've got to bear that in mind when you're playing. Listen, you know what? There's no VAR. You'll probably get away with a little bit more tonight. So from a corner, maybe you'll get away from a little you'll get away with a little shirt pull or a little nudge, you know, you're relying on the goalkeeper on the um, the linesman and the referee. Mohamed Kudus, honestly, trot look, roughed up Trossard. His work rate, he snuffed him the whole half. Every time Trossard's got the ball, Kuda sprints back and doubles up on him, and he hasn't been able to do anything. He hasn't done anything. He was fouled. He was 100%. Aaron Ramsdale's shirt is being pulled. It's a foul. But there's no VAR. We know that. Refs, a lot of the time, don't see them things. West Ham haven't had one shot. Not one shot on or off target. The goal was an own goal by Ben White. So it tells you the way they're playing. But you've got to understand the game and, and change a little bit. Be a little bit more physical. Use the dark arts a little bit from corners and things. Have you noticed how Ramsdale is kicking it long more often than Zero playing out from the back? Yeah, we seem to be struggling when we're playing out from the back because they're pressing. Could add Kudas instead of that 29. Yeah, 100%. Fraser said, I agree. I don't think Arteta cares about this, which is unfortunate. Why wouldn't you want accolades? He cared about the community shield. Yeah, totally agree. Maybe because it was Pep. He was up against. If Ben White does his job, like Peel is saying, Ben White gets in the right position and clears that, the pull on the shirt is irrelevant. Look in the mirror before we blame other people. Ben White's in the wrong position, you know? Um, but yeah, it's, it's disappointing because it is a foul, but there's no VAR. Here's Zinchenko. Who, listen, I'll give him some credit. At least he tries to make something happen. Where you can see when Odegaard, and Odegaard's been poor for a number of weeks, when Odegaard doesn't start and isn't playing well, we've got so little creativity in this team. So little creativity, it's unbelievable. Um, who in this team is trying to pick out a pass to make something happen? King Book said Trossard ain't a starter, I've been telling man. He's one of them players, isn't he? He comes off the bench and you think, wow, what a player. You need to start him. And then you start him and you go, hmm, hasn't really done much there. Back to the bench you go. I've always said personally, Martinelli plays left wing over Trossard for me. But could you play Trossard in the attacking midfield role? That's where I would probably play him. Where you've been playing Havertz and Fabio. Here is Trossard, a bit more central. Gets it in the box. It's blocked. Trossard again. West Ham have got everyone behind the ball. Trossard is good against tired legs, says uh, Red Eye. Here's Havertz. Gabriel. You can see this is all going wrong. Gets Tries to buy a foul. It's a cheap foul. Here's Jared Bowen. Havertz runs back. Jared Bowen, good tackle, Kivio. 
Does well there. Finds Inchenko. Good defending. Uh, AHD said, uh, HD Gaming said, Curtis, this is a running theme. We can't hack any physical midfield because he's so obsessed with playing two number 10s. Pep realized it, moved away from it. We need an uh, all-phase midfielder who is strong. Yeah, I agree. We do. We need more physicality, mate, um, to deal with strong midfields. This midfield is not mobile enough, not strong enough. Zinchenko looks for Eddie and Ketia, loses the header, and that will be a goal kick. Or is it a corner? Two minutes added on. Eddie. Eddie's been non-existent. Don't get me wrong. He hasn't had a lot of service. But I said at the start of the game, if this goes wrong, it's on the manager. No excuses. That's your midfield. You ain't going to get away with that midfield. We've got two minutes added on, 90 seconds till half time. They are parking the bus, but who can blame them? They've lost their last three games. They're playing Arsenal at home. They're one nil up from an own goal. It's David Moyes. Is he going to go on the front foot and try and score two or three? No, he isn't. He's going to put 10, 11 players behind the ball and try and win this game 1 0. Kai Havertz, wow. Just studded Paqueta. <sighs> Look at this, probably no VAR. Does he win the ball? What a touch by Paqueta. I'm running out of words for Kai Havertz. I am running out of words. He is. I'm genuinely can't believe this guy. Oh, studs him. Halfway up his shin. Free kick. Lucky the ref don't give him a yellow for that. 45 seconds till half time. We, all of a sudden, after a good first 10 minutes, you're sitting here going, what was the point? What's the point turning up for this? Liverpool won it up. Um, here's Gabriel, finds Ramsdale. Look, they've pressed us all half. Forces Ramsdale to go long. Eddie ain't winning that header above Mavropanos. So easy. So easy. Kudas, two or three players on him. Just gets his way out, man. Oh, you've seen the chest control from Paqueta, in it, man? That was mad. That was, that was Jogger Benito, Brazilian. Half-time whistle goes, and my theory is, what's the point? What is the point? What's the point turning up, playing a weak team, and getting dealt with like that? Um, let's get the tweet out. In fact, I'll do it on here so I don't have to... Um, it's just... Uh, it's just you've got better things to do with your time than, than watch this rubbish. Let's get the tweet out. 112 million midfield of Havertz, 65 mil. I'm even going to put how much. Fabio, 35 mil. And Jorginho, 12 mil. Lightweight and ineffective. Well, is it like to me? If it's like it's like we've got caught in between. If you don't care about this competition, just put youth team players in and get beat. You've come with half a team, but not really a team. It just don't make sense. Remember, remember the hat trick on the weekend, Eddie. Things change real quick in football, right? I'm telling you, Takan, you got better things to do with your time. We, we've become a very boring team to watch. I'm, I'm keeping it 100. Slow, tepid, timid football. I tell man all the time, the pace in our team comes from Martinelli. We are slow without Martinelli. People don't believe me. We're not a quick team. Eddie, these guys, they're not quick. Martinelli is the live wire in our attack. Trossard, uh, listen, maybe he is a super sub, but 
I think he's better off playing more central. The problem he's got tonight, you've got Kufau and then Kudus doubles up on him straight away and he's getting no support. And then the problem you've got, because your left back is inverting, you've got no overlap. If you had a natural left back, he would probably pull Kufal away, then you're 1v1 with Kudus. But you've got no full back there. So Trossard's going 2v1. I mean, David said Havertz is being scapegoated because of 65 million. David, let me tell you something. He's being scapegoated because he hasn't had one good game for Arsenal since he signed for us. Let's keep it 100. I haven't seen Kai Havertz have a better game than probably a 6 out of 10 since he joined us. Probably the penalty at Bournemouth. He ain't doing nothing. If you think he's playing well, I don't know what game of football you're watching. That guy is useless. And because he costs 65 million, probably I am being more harsh on him. Because we all know that that deal, most of us felt like from day one that deal was not going to work. And guess what? It hasn't worked. It hasn't worked, right? But like, sometimes they go, oh, you know, you're only a football fan. But we do know our football as well. I think 99% of you would have said, oh, I'll take James Madison at 40 million over Kai Havertz at 65 million. It's not rocket science. He's not a midfielder. I've said it time and time again. You ain't getting nothing out of Kai Havertz in midfield. It's not happening. Not happening. He don't want to play in midfield. He ain't got the engine for it. Give the deal time, bro. Time is something you don't have when Pep Guardiola's in charge. You think Pep cares about time? Oh, don't worry, lads. They're giving Havertz time. Time to do what? <laughs> time to do what? First of all, tell me what position you play him on the pitch first. In the attacking midfield role? Play him up front? Nah. He ain't concerned about Havertz, bro. Trust me. Marco said that Eddie fans are going to be quiet after this game. Havertz inverted performance. Just shocking. Wait for the bigger fish to fry tweets later. Mate, I'm telling you. We are not taking this competition seriously tonight. This is, um, for me, I'm fuming. I'm fuming. I want to go Wembley and watch a final. We're, we're just stumbling out of the competition. Zamir said Havertz is not even worthy of 10 million. I wouldn't pay £3.50. I'd rather get a meal deal. A sandwich, some fruit and a drink would be more useful. Alfred said, starting to see why Trossard struggles when he starts... He's too good with both feet to limit him to one side. Put him central. I agree with that. Santi was both footed, but being in the middle allows him. Yeah, I agree. Then he can play left or right and move. But on the left, especially when they double up, it's difficult. Miss said Havertz is an inside job. Yep. Yeah. I said it. Corruption settings. Big up missed. Uh, Toro said, who was West Ham's best player? Ben White or Zinni? I, I thought Zinni was not great, but at least he's trying to um, create something, you know? But, and uh, Trixie said, bro, I respect you, uh, love the club, but please stop making excuses for this club. Full strength or not, these men are on 100k, they all should be our test players, and if they're not performing. The thing is, and I hear what you're saying, but at the same time, Trixie, if you give a bad player 100 grand a week, it don't make him a good player. It don't mean he's going to perform. I'm of the belief Eddie and Ketter is not that good. So if you give him 100 grand, it don't make him a good player. I don't think Fabio Vieira is that good. You buy him for 35 million doesn't make him good. Havertz, I don't think he's good. You put him on 220 grand a week doesn't make him good. So the wage is not actually a reflection of their ability level. That's what Arsenal felt they were worth. I think most of the people in the comments would have said, do you know what? I wouldn't have actually give this guy 220. So I don't I think the wage is irrelevant. As I said, this is on the manager. I think our best player has been Reese Nelson, to be honest. Reese has been the bright spot. Eddie has done nothing. The ball's bouncing off him. Uh, Trossard, they've just doubled up on him and shut him down. He played one nice pass into uh, Zinni. Nelson's been our best player. He hasn't been amazing, but at least he's driving at people. Fabio Vieira has done nothing. Havertz. Put in a couple good challenges at the start. After that, he's been useless. Jorginho, not good enough. Zinni's trying to make something happen. Gabriel's been a bit shaky. Trying to look for fouls when he should be stronger. Kivio's done okay. Ben White scores an own goal. He's in the wrong position. And Ramsdale's just done okay. He hasn't really had much to do. He was fouled, but there's no VAR. So I'm looking at the manager. I told you, this, this game is on the manager. That's your midfield. 
You spent 112 million on that midfield, and it's non-existent. Concept said he never cooked at Chelsea. When he came in on the back foot, I've seen nothing for him to say it will work. He had to hit the ground running the midfield. He's like, I said, the day we signed Kai Havertz, I said, I feel sorry for that guy. I feel sorry for him. And people said, why? Why do you feel sorry for him? I said, because he's already starting on minus one the second he walks through the door. Because people like me, we're already saying, I don't rate this guy. I've watched this guy for three years at Chelsea and I don't rate him. He's inconsistent. He's lightweight. He don't score enough. He's got no set position. And we've already been burnt by Chelsea a few times in the market. So he started on day one at minus one. So he was already fighting a difficult battle. He had to come in and hit the ground running and restore the faith of the Arsenal fans. He's got nowhere near that. He's got absolutely nowhere near it. His confidence looks shot to pieces. And I, I just, I don't understand it. I don't get it. I don't know. The, the biggest problem, you don't even know what his best position is. His best performances have been up front. And we keep playing him in the eight role. I don't get it. Um... Gareth said, uh, good watch along better than, hey, big up, Gareth. Uh, Danny said, Kai Havertz, a liability. Uh, listen, in the end, I know people who listen to this channel regularly will say, I'm, I'm harsh on him. But I'm getting to the point now where I'm, I feel like I've got to stop blaming him. It's the manager's fault. Who's more at fault, Kai Havertz or Mikel Artel? It's Mikel Artel. He never bought himself. He never gave himself that contract. It's the manager's fault. It's just difficult when I watch this guy try and control a ball and it bounces off him. At that moment in time, all I can think about is what the hell is this guy doing? He can't even control a ball. But this is 100% on the manager. Nobody in the, no no Arsenal fan was saying in the summer, you know what, let's go and get Kai Havertz and rescue him. I've said it before, Arteta thinks he's the RSPCA. He thinks he's too clever. Because he managed to get a tune out of Xhaka in the last season, it's like, oh, oh look, give me, go on, bring him here, I'll sort him out. I'll turn him into a world beater. That don't always work, bro. That don't always work. It doesn't. You need to sign players that are on the up. They're playing well at their club. They're coming in with confidence. Declan Rice, good season at West Ham, wins a cup, comes in full of confidence. Look at the way the guy's playing. Timber was the same before the injury, you know? But listen, we got to look at a number of these players. People were saying 8 out of 10, 9 out of 10 transfer window. Yeah, Trixie, I hear you. Your point was, Arteta, these are his players. They should be performing. Ultimately, the blame has to be on that manager. This is his team. I'm looking at it now. I think he signed every player. Eddie and Nelson, probably the only two. But he gave Eddie and Nelson new contracts. Every player he bought. Ramsdale, I think he bought every single one. Nine out of the 11 are his signings. And the other two he gave contracts. Uh, Wasim said, whilst I agree with your comments, he doesn't pick his price tag. And again, he doesn't. Unfortunately, price tags lead to different conversations. If Kai Havertz costs £5 million, we'd be probably sitting here going, oh, he's not very good, but £5 million, give him time? Maybe? Oh, people saying uh, Gabriel Magalhães was uh, Unai. I'm not sure. It could have been, actually. It's the reality of life. I say, yo, I've bought this new car. You look at it, you go, oh, that's nice. How much you pay for it? Seven grand. You go, oh, that's not bad. If I told you I paid forty-five grand for it, you go, oh, that's a bit steep. For that car, you didn't need to pay that much. So, it's crazy. But, listen, I, for me, the biggest problem today is the midfield. Biggest problem is the midfield. Midfields connect teams. They protect the defence. They help the attack. Our midfield today is non-existent. Jorginho can't keep up when Paqueta and Kudus and these guys drive through the middle. Fabio Vieira has done nothing. He has been... He might have been worse than Havertz, I'm going to be honest. I'm not going to let him get away with it either. He's done nothing in this game, Fabio Vieira. I'm going to have to call him Fabio again. I've got to delete that Vieira once again. He's done nothing. He's in his second season. So I, I don't want this to just be 15 minutes of Havertz. There are a lot of players today. You know, Eddie Nketiah was getting green screens on Monday. 
it's back to default settings today. He can't hold the ball up. Mavropanos is bullying him. I said it before, people. A bad game doesn't make you a bad player. And a great game does not make you a great player. Eddie Nketiah had a great game against Sheffield United. Deserves credit. Fantastic hat trick. But it's the worst team in the Premier League at home. Took his goals well. Does it all of a sudden mean that he's a top striker? No, he's not. We still need a striker. Um, Havertz is a D-Tech version of the washed-up Ozil playing in Turkey. Yeah, I'd take a, a 35-year-old Ozil over what I'm saying. See it now. I think Declan Rice got to come on at half-time. Young Gunner said, The main reason Arteta can't bench Kai is because of the price tag. If he was 10 million prospect, we could bin him. The owners... Listen, you're absolutely bang on. You're spot on. When you spend that kind of money at Arsenal, you can't just throw him on the bench after five games. Josh's going to be on the phone like, yo, Stan's asking questions, bro. You paid 65 million and Havertz is on the bench. What's going on? You convinced me on the phone to make Stan spend 65 million on him. Now you don't want to play him. He's, he's trying to force him to, to work, you know? Big up Malanga uh, for becoming a member. Really appreciate that, bro. And uh, he also says, Eddie Hattrick stinking up the place, Big C. It's like, bro, that Hattrick tax, man. I told you, that Sheffield United Hattrick. I said it on the on the, on the the watch along on the weekend. I said, every one of them goals was bittersweet because I celebrated the goal and then I had a realisation, rah, we ain't getting rid of this guy. This guy will probably get a new contract. Half time, same team coming on the pitch. I can't see no Declan Rice. Same 11. Manager doesn't react. Eddie was put on 100k a week as a favour for Saka's agent. Edu getting kickbacks from Todd Bowley for taking Havertz and Jorginho. Something's not right, man. Something's not right with the Chelsea. The Chelsea business is dodgy as anything, I'm telling you. I'm convinced. Something ain't right why we keep buying Chelsea players. It makes no sense. Edu has been quiet lately. Not a word, says Paul. Big second half coming up. Big second half. We should not be just rolling out of competitions like this. Show some pride and go and win a trophy. Stop letting us down. We haven't won a trophy for three years. We're not Tottenham. This ain't the give it time league. This is get it done Premier League. Uh, spot on, Elliot. We need to stop ramping. We ain't some mid-table dons, you know. This manager's been here four years I don't want to hear that we can only compete in one or two competitions. Compete in three or four. That's why you spent 700 million. Second half about to get underway. Come on. Lift it. Eddie, liven up. Reese Nelson's been the only bright spot for us in that first half. He's the only one that's playing at a quicker tempo. We're about to get underway. Eddie gets us underway. People saying Ramsdale looks like he's making us nervous. He's going a lot more direct. Um than um, Raya usually does, that's for sure. We need a big second half now. Remember, it goes to penalties already there. Jorginho bullied. Paqueta rolls it into Jared Bowen. Jared Bowen! Ben White clears it off the line. Great save, Aaron Ramsdale. 24 seconds into the second half. Split open. Look at jo Look at Jorginho! I told man when we signed this guy, it's fraudulent. It's a backhander. I had people telling me about Ballon d'Or nominations. He is rubbish. That's why mid-table Chelsea did not renew his contract. The man was swimming. I thought he was in the ocean. Free header goes wide, Suchek. He was swimming in the ocean. That midfield is a shambles. I don't know how they've come back out for the second off. How can you justify going to Chelsea when they're mid-table and buying a midfielder that they are not offering a new contract to? Because clearly the guy's past his best. It's terrible. It's how, this midfield is shot. I would love you would love to play against this Arsenal midfield. Jorginho, slow, weak. Havertz don't really want to defend. Ideally, he'd like to be up the pitch. And Fabio, don't even know why he's on the pitch. Horrible. I would genuinely rather have El Nenny on the pitch than Jorginho. No joke, El Nenny is, I think he's better than him. And I don't rate El Nenny at all, by the way. 
come on, man. 24 seconds into the second off, and Bowen nearly scores. We look soft again. This looks like a soft Arsenal team. Ramsdale finds Gabriel. I would love us to play quicker. I would just love us. Put Trossard where Havertz is. Take Havertz off or take Fabio off and put Martinelli left wing. Terrible ball, Zinchenko. It was that for a throw in. These are, yeah, these are the players that, are, you know, are meant to come in if we need them. Concept said both American owners, they came for a meal. Nelson Havertz didn't negotiate 65 mil, but he negotiated his huge raise. That is on him. He has to justify it. Yeah. Yeah. But of course, if they say yes, you're not going to say no. Oh, Fabio just bouncing off, man, like a pinball. That brother's weak. Soft. He's, man, a soft, man. I'm telling you, weak. I'm not into this, you know. I don't like watching an Arsenal team just getting roughed up. And you know West Ham are a streetwise team. Trossard bullied. No oh, man, I will whack you up. He's lucky to get a free kick for that. Jorginho has 53 pace on EAFC. Genuinely, I don't even think he's that quick. Yeah, maybe with a hunter card, but not natural. These man aren't ramping. Kudos there. Bam! I mean, it's a foul, but... These men are these men are strong, man. We're weak. No man are gonna leave the pitch with a black eye and everything. Look, Trossard just took a whack in the face there of Kudus. These men aren't playing. Come on, man. Jorginho to take the free kick. Remember, West Ham have lost their last three games. They lost to Everton on the weekend, and we roll into town. Santa Claus FC here knock us out of a competition because apparently we don't care about it. Apparently, we're not bothered. Zinchenko gets tackled. Fabio Vieira, you're a waste of time, mate. You are genuinely... You are weak. Who signed this guy? Who signed him? That is a brown envelope signing, if ever I've seen one. George Mendes. Backhanders all over the place. More backhanders than Federer against Nadal, mate. I'm telling you now, people... Who signed this? They said he was the new Bernardo Silva. Do you know how good Bernardo Silva is? He ain't no Bernardo Silva. Oh, God. Ball over the top, Kudus. Cuts inside, shoots, game over. I just caught that. Oh, you're a joke. You're a joke, mate. The guy we should have signed. I'm done. I'm finished. I'm not accepting this. They'll justify it on Twitter. Oh, Ramsdale got fouled. Oh, bigger fish to fry. We don't care about the Carabao Cup. Mohamed Kudus, long ball over Zinchenko. What's Zinni? Look at the first touch. Sends him to the moon. Nutmeg, what a goal. What a goal that is. What a goal. 2 0. Look at the touch. Wow. 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 What a goal. Embarrassed ourselves. <sighs> Embarrassed ourselves. Absolutely no point. No point bringing on Rice and them, man, now. Leave this rubbish team on the pitch for 90 minutes and let them run all around and suffer. Le leave that team to suffer. I don't want to see Declan Rice. I don't want to see Martinelli. I don't want to see Saka. They're done. They're a mess. These are your players. You bought them. You PR'd them. You told me Fabio is this bright talent. Look at, look at Jorginho. You make me sick. I don't like a lot of these players. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest. Some of these players should not be playing for Arsenal. Genuinely, there is a good half a dozen players who need to be sold by this manager. He needs to stop overhyping average players. Eddie, great hat trick. You're not good enough, bro. You are not good enough. Jo Look at Havertz. What's that? You are just. You're a joke. You are the worst signing I have ever seen. The worst. 
Take him off the pitch, you fraud. He's going to bring Declan Rice on. Oh, we're not going to play Declan Rice. He needs a rest. Oh, 2 0 down. Go on, Deck. Win me the game, lad. Go on, Deckers. <laughs> oh, my God. This guy don't want to win trophies. He don't want to win trophies. You think we're with you think Champions League, bruv? You think we can win the Champions League with this guy's tactics and the Prem? He's going to look back on the end of the season. I'm telling you now, he will look back at the end of the season. He'll say, do you know what? That Carabao Cup that you've bottled and just threw away again because you're not interested in it because apparently you're too big for the Carabao Cup, the League Cup. He'll look back at the end of the season. He'll go, that was actually my best opportunity of winning a trophy. But we got a part. What did they say? Look at this. They're ripping us open. Emerson, left-hand side. They ain't even got a striker on the pitch. Whipped in. Oh, my God. We're scrambling. <laughs> this is... Oh, look at these little weaklings, mate. We look like puppies. We look like a litter of puppies that have just given birth. And they're looking for their mother to get some milk. Babies. Babies on the pitch. This is like a kindergarten, like a creche. Like a nursery. A bunch of little babies on the pitch. You should have dragged man off the pitch. If you want to make changes, right, you should have just took man off the pitch as soon as the ball hit the back of the net. I'm, I'm taking, yo, get him off, get him off. Get Declan Rice can't win you this game by himself. Either don't bring him on or bring him on with Martinelli and bring on two others. It's a shambles. Not a, I'm not, not talking about the community. A lot of the Arsenal fan base and creators as well, I'm saying it, this is what you asked for because you wanted multiple changes. You was picking crazy starting lineups. Look at this shambolic from Ben White. You, mate. Oh. No wonder Southgate doesn't pick him. I wouldn't pick him either. What right back is he going to play over realistically anyway? He ain't better than Reese James. He ain't better than Kyle Walker. He ain't better than Trent. So I don't know why, why are we all fuming that this guy's not in the England squad. He probably shouldn't be in there. All right, you could play him centre back. Alfred told you he's better 1v1. That's a huge save. This fan base will turn around and say he should have been stronger. Nothing that Ramsdale could do. He's played well. The defence in front of him is an absolute... Just getting ripped. But the midfield are even worse. David said, people keep telling me we have real depth. Oh, it's a joke, mate. It's an absolute joke. 8 out of 10 window in, in the summer. People were having parties on the balcony about that window. Not me, bruv. Not me. Big up, David. Concept incoming triple sub. If you're going to make a triple sub, you should have made it. What is he waiting for? Theo, imagine choosing Eddie over Kudus. How the hell did Averts get bought? How did Jorginho get signed? Arteta is never going to win a trophy. Bro. E. Ross said, looking for their mothers to give them milk. I'm telling you now. Puppies. A bunch of puppies. Zinni can't defend. Gabriel, instead of engaging, decides to open his legs. Vera's a waste. Nelson looks lost. Get the starting 11 on. This, honestly, I feel like I'm watching an under-23 game. Our players look like under-23s. They look like grown men. And we've got experienced, expensive internationals on. Look at that ball from Jorginho. Pussy out for a goal kick. This is one of the worst games I've ever seen under Arteta's role. It's the most pointless game ever. Tommy Asu's coming on. Well, he's a defender. Who else you bringing on? You should be making four substitutes. Declan Rice coming on. Make more than that, bro. That's not enough. Is Declan Rice getting applauded? He is. They're appla they will applaud him at 2-0. Of course they'll applaud him. They're embarrassing us. Absolutely embarrassing. Man United are losing to Newcastle. So the competition will get even easier. Is that Almiron? Great goal. So United are losing. Man City are out. And guess what? We're getting bopped. Tommy Asu comes on. Ugh, Jorginho's off. He should never play for this football club again. Never. If I was the manager, I'd say to Jorginho, just 
Go on gardening leave, mate. Your contract's up in the summer. You ain't playing for the rest of the season. Zinchenko off. I actually don't think he's been the worst player, but who cares? He still ain't been good. Look at Gabriel. Doesn't head the ball. Jared Bowen. We're getting embarrassed. I used to call Xhaka and El Nenny the Chuckle Brothers. I would take the Chuckle Brothers in midfield over this. This is worse than the Chuckle Brothers. This is Def Comedy Jam. Like, I've got Cedric the Entertainer and Bernie Mac and Chris Tucker in midfield. They're a comedy act. You've got an actual comedy act. Some people said there was a few boos for Rice. I, I don't think we're going to score. I really hope I'm... Look at that ball. That is absolutely awful. Oh, God, it's a goal kick. I'm going to commentate on the game. I'm a little bit lost at the moment. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Didn't take it seriously, mate. This guy doesn't want to win. Doesn't want to win. He thinks we're going to win the Champions League. So he throws these competitions away. People saying who's got the armband. I actually can't tell. It doesn't look like Eddie's got it on. Then, man, I got Lucas Fabianski in goal, and we got rid of him nearly 10 years ago. He's 38 years of age, and we've he has one save to make, a header that went straight at him. How is Fabio Vieira and Havertz still on this pitch? How are they still on? Like, what? what's the point? You can't bring Rice and Tommy Asso on. That ain't going to win you the game. You've got to bring, oh, he's just, oh, Emerson's nutmegging people, clattering people as well. You need to make three or four changes. It's wild. Absolutely wild. Ah, oh, dear. Goals by... I don't even care about all them. So I don't know how... How are Havertz and Fabio still on the pitch? Absolute disgrace that they're still playing. Oh, look at the state of Havertz. Honestly. He is... It's beyond a joke. I feel like it's match-fixing at this point. West Ham on the attack... Kufa whips it in. Ben White heads it away. Edge of the box. Jared Bowen. Goal 3-0. 3-0. Oh. oh, my day. If you don't laugh, you'll cry, people. If you don't laugh, you'll cry. We didn't want to win this anyway. Ooh. We, we've got to be... We're going to try and win the league and the Champions League. Oi. Do you know what? You wanted this, Mikel. So, well done. You've got it, mate. You asked for this. With that midfield. Deflection, I think. Kufal whips it in. Edge of the box. Anyone marking him? Any midfield? Deflection off Kivior. Ramsdale palms it in his own net. Ben White heads it straight out to Jared Bowen. He's unmarked. <laughs> Absolutely disgraceful what I am watching. Oh, Rambo, you got to save that, bro. That's you done, by the way. Uh, I don't care if there's a deflection. This is a disgrace. 3-0. Huh. That's our best chance of a trophy down the drain. Declan Rice getting embarrassed at his old team. Well, what do you guys think now? Are people happy with this? Put a weak team out. Our squad's good enough. We've got squad depth. We've still got Fabio Vieira and Havertz on the pitch. Two of the worst signings ever. Nelson whips it in back post. Trossard doesn't get there. We've lost every single 50-50. Where's the pride? Jared Bowen just dribbling past Havertz. No passion. They should be training in the morning. Don't give them the day off. Shocking. We could we could concede more here, by the way. This is absolute. It is end the stream. It really. I can't believe we've got twenty nine minutes more of this. This game's done. I actually might watch the Man U game. It's pointless. No Carabao Cup draw. 
We're a mess. We're a mess, mate. Edge of the box, Jared Bowen unmarked on his left foot. Deflection and Ramsdale slaps it in his own net. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Gabriel's having one as well. The whole team's gone. The whole team is an absolute mess. This is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. Get De Zerbi in. Listen, people say what they want, but this is disgusting performance. 3 nil, you know. 3 nil. Man, we're asking for this. Too many people wanted this team out. It's a pathetic lineup. Nah, shirt won't get ripped, you know, bro. Shirt won't get ripped because <laughs> you got Fabio Vieira and Havertz and Jorginho in midfield. My expectation was on the floor before the game. It was on the floor. Absolutely disgraceful performance, this. Just just get just make another I don't know. There's no point even making a change. Uh, Jorge said, why even try? It's already 2-0. Oh, well, 3-0 now. Jared Bones cut his head. So there's a break. Tapan said, sell everyone on the pitch except White Rambo and Gabriel. Flying Dutchman, I've been watching the game on German The Zone. Even the German commentators are saying Havertz is crap. They're reminiscing his Leverkusen days. Well, Martinelli's coming on now. Why didn't you do it at 2-0? Why'd you wait for 3-0, bro? Sali Don't tell. He's bringing on Sako and so. Oh. There's no point bringing Saliba on, bro. We're 3-0 down. Use your head. Saka and Martinelli are coming on. Alberto said, I'm tired of this rubbish we have. I'd have never subjected Rice to this. Like I said yesterday, start him. Like You don't bring him on. At this end, but he's getting embarrassed now because he's 3-0 down against his old club. Scouse Mike, this has been coming all, se all season. Arteta ball, I agree, bro. Brian said Zinchenko and Ramsdale out. Toby said, uh, I bet we get beat by Newcastle on the weekend as well. This was never going to help our confidence. People saying Rice is getting booed when he's on the ball. Havertz don't even know where the ball is. You've won a court. Apparently Newcastle have scored again. 2-0 to Newcastle. Man United are crumbling out. Liverpool, Newcastle, Carabao Cup final probably. Liverpool will walk that now. Oh, Chelsea are in it as well, aren't they? Man United are 2-0 down, so that's the only positive, but we've disgraced ourselves tonight. 3-0 down at West Ham. Unbelievable. And somehow, some of these guys are still on the pitch. Gabriel Magalhães, we're in the armband now. Reese Nelson whips it in. We don't win the header. We haven't won anything tonight. Here's Trossard. Look, they double up on him straight away. He ain't going nowhere. Look, they're going to clamp him down. Jared Bowen, corner to Arsenal. The hat-trick against Sheffield United shows and Ketia is a top-level championship striker. Nothing more. We stuck him on 100k a week. Roche said, Curtis, I thought Halloween was yesterday. Arsenal decided to delay it. Ten Hag on borrowed time. Tick-tock. Listen, I, I'm honestly, in all fairness, I'm not even one bit bothered about Man United losing. I can't even focus on them. I can't take any pleasure out of Man United losing when Arsenal are doing this. Why did Arteta not do this at 2-0? He takes Trossard off. Of course he does. He ain't going to take Fabio off, is he? Who's done nothing. And Nelson. I'm being serious now. I should end, I should end the stream. I should just end the stream now. I'm I'm finished. I, I genuinely do not want to watch any more of this game. I don't want to. Of course, Fabio and Havertz survive. They're having the worst game you could ever imagine. And you take off Trossard and you and I'm listen. I'm not saying Trossard's playing well because he's not. And I'm but N Nelson was one of our best players. First off, Trossard has had a bad game. But Fabio and Havertz have done nothing. They've got no intensity. They don't do anything. And the guy drags off Nelson. It's just unbelievable. Unbelievable. Honestly, this is... Wow. I'm going to try and stay calm because I can't right now. Saka's on. We need to score in the next five, ten minutes. Otherwise, I mean, I don't... Look, Declan Rice puts it out for a goal. It's, it's done. It's a goal kick. 
This game's a ridiculous game of football. Absolutely ridiculous. And this has been coming for a while. It's been coming for a while. We've been riding our luck for a number of weeks playing like this. Going to be interesting, some of the feedback on this. Um, all season loading. Anabi said it's the players, Curtis. Co-man music, man. I told you, man. Co-man music. People don't believe me, you know, when I talk about co-man music. It's real, people. It's real. Every now and then, the cones come back out and the madness happens. Tonight, he's got all the cones out. Saka. Wins are throwing. Oh, crazy. Fergie, uh, Fergie said in the Beckham documentary, you can't have favourites. Listen, the reality is, right, even though Fergie said that, I believe every manager does have favourites, right? Uh, there is players at a team that a manager will feel are more important than others. That's the reality of football. But the problem is, your favourite should be the better players. What's Look at that ball from Fabio Vieira. Just puts out for a goal kick. Waste of time, him and Havertz. Your favourite should be your best players. The problem at Arsenal, some of his favourites are players like Havertz and Jorginho and Nketiah. Rubbish players. That's the problem. I don't mind if your favourites are Saka and Saliba and Martinelli. But, boy. Listen, I want to say, people, a big, big thank you to the community because there's 4,000 of you in the chat. Now, I can imagine some of you are... Fans of other teams, you've come here to see the meltdown, and I respect it. The game is the game. But I appreciate everyone staying locked because I can understand some of you just locking this off. You know, because what 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 on earth are we watching it? What are we supposed to take out of this? Jamal said it's not looking good, bruv. Big up Big C in the community. Love from Dubai. Big up to you, bruv. Big up concept. You can always lose a game, but it's always the manner of the loss. We've not even we've not even been close to Pepper and Fabianski. This is shambolic, and I'm stunned. 38-year-old keeper, he's made one save. It was straight at him. Robbie will say post-match, bigger fish to fry. I told you that fish is finding Nemo. People thought it was the jaws, the shock. But it's finding Nemo. We ain't frying no fish. We're having fish fingers. That's the only fish we're having. Um, listen, man. Information and entertainment. We might need some entertainment to get through this. Ash said I should watch Coronation Street. Bro, I might do a Coronation Street watch along. Just lock it off. I'll be like, listen, they've just walked into the Rover's return. He's ordered a pint. He's sat down. It'll be more entertaining than this. Here's Kai Havertz. Finds Martinelli, Kudus, what a performance he's put in tonight, by the way. A player that apparently wanted to move to Arsenal. But don't worry, we sign Havertz for 20 million more. Fabio Vieira gets bullied, gives away a free kick. Honestly, player ratings are going to be outrageous tomorrow. Like, it's going to be mad. Jared Bowen's got stitches in his eye and everything. The man's bus his eye, cut open, bleeding, still scores against us. Bro, we need a sing-along. Get your requests in. <laughs> Bro, we might have to. In some of the um, Europa League streams last year, because Europa League was so bad, we ended up talking about hip-hop songs, biscuits, you know, computer games. We may have to do something, because this... 20 minutes. I can't wait for this game to finish. This is brutal. It's absolutely brutal. Man United are losing 2-0 at home to Newcastle. And we can't even enjoy that as an Arsenal fan base. I can't enjoy it. If we would be winning right now, do you know how happy I would be right now? Winning the game and United losing 2-0 at home. I can't, I can't take any pleasure out of that. I can't send a message. I can't say anything. Because we're a disgrace. We're 3-0 down at West Ham. West Ham lost to Everton at the weekend. Everton. Calvert-Lewin, you know, 1-0. They kept a clean sheet against them. With Michael Keane and, and, and Dinosaur Arms Pickford. And we've come here and let free in. Santa Claus, I told you, we are Santa Claus FC. If you need a win, Arsenal will turn up and look after you people. We just what we do. Eddie's on the ball. Kudus again. 
hunting. He's been hunting, man, the whole game. Uh, I, I, do you know? I don't even want to tweet. I, I'm, I don't want to say it. I tell you something. There's gonna be grenades. There's gonna be grenades on Twitter or X. I'm telling you now, Peter. I ain't holding back. There's no holding back, people. Ramsdale plays out. Great touch there by Kivy or finds. Fabio, come on. Look, Martinelli's in space. Gives it away, Tommy Asu. Uh, do you know what? I, I just need to accept it. I need to... Look, Martinelli's now fouled him. I, I just need to accept that we've lost this game and try and start moving on from it right now. I need to process this game from right now. In my head, I'm still thinking, you know, if we get a goal in the next 15 minutes or five minutes, nah, do you know what? Forget it. We've lost. It's done. Arsenal therapy. And we move on. Like, because if I try and keep hope, it's only going to make it worse. Broads is here. My East London brother. Jared Bowen's agent. He says, big up my brother in the community. I hate to say I told you so, but the lad named Jared Bowen, he's a world-class talent. He's been calling it for a while. Ball whipped in. It could get worse. Oh, it goes out for a goal kick. It is madness. So we're down to three competitions. Some people think we can win the Champions League, by the way. Like, we can't even win the Carabao Cup. So get all that out of your head. If you can't beat West Ham with three of their best players, you think we can go Madrid and deal with Camavinga and Jude Bellingham and them, man? Come on. Bayern Munich with Kane and Gnabry and Sané. It's, it's, no, no, nah, it ain't happening. Ain't happening. Even Napoli, them, man, will just... Nah, bro. Man, experienced ballers. Jesus out until December. Party could be out. I just hope this doesn't open up a bigger wound. My worry with Arsenal sometimes is not just the fact that, okay, we've lost a game and it's bad. And like people are saying, the manner of this defeat is what's so worrying. If we went there, battled, lost 2-1, it's painful. But, yo, it was one of them days, man. It just didn't happen. To go there and get stuffed 3-0 and not even make the keeper do anything is like, what? I'm already concerned about the Newcastle game. That's already... I'm all, Newcastle are beating Man United 2-0. Their confidence will be sky high after tonight. They're in a quarterfinal of a cup, knocked out my new probably if they win that game. We've just lost three. Do you know what I mean? Confidence is low. It's it's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, and I know Pete, listen, there are people who will say you use this as an opportunity to criticize the manager. But listen, there has to be accountability for this manager. I'm not going over the top. I'm not saying tonight, get rid of him, blah, blah, blah. What I'm saying is, I always say, people say, trust the process. I say, what is the process? What's the end What's the end goal? Do Arsenal win the title? Is that the end of the process? Do we win the Champions League? He spent nearly 700 million. You give it another year, year and a half, we'll be talking about a billion pound. I expect major trophies at Arsenal when you're getting close to a billion pounds, right? I don't expect one FA Cup and one top four. That ain't enough for me. We won the FA Cup years ago. We was in lockdown when we won the FA Cup. Need more. Need more people. But boy, 15 minutes. So I can't wait for this game to finish. I cannot wait for this game to finish. I've had enough. I've had enough. Here's Saka. The changes have made no difference. And it's not their fault. You brought them on too late. Look at that one. Eddie and Ketia played a 1-2. It turned into just a 1. There was no 2. It's a Saka rolled the ball into his feet for the 1-2. He kicked it out for a goal kick. He kicked it out for a goal. I had my message in me on the weekend saying, I told you about Eddie. He's proved you wrong, Curtis. All of that criticism of Eddie. Now look, he scored a hat trick against Sheffield United. Look at do. You signed these man. Oh, Eddie proved you wrong. He scored a hat trick against Sheffield United. I told you he was a top striker, Curtis. Give him time. 
I said, bro, it's Sheffield United. They're going championship real quick. Are we really going to overhype that hat trick? And look tonight. Look at this. Cecil's birthday mashup. We need a striker. Badly. Gabriel Jesus is injury prone. Eddie is bang average. Declan Rice has come on. He's not even playing well. You should have made the changes at 2-0. And we would have still had a chance. 3-0 is too late, bro. The game's done. Look, Ben Rama's bullying Ben White. Look, and you've pulled him down. Wow, refs let him off. That was a foul, by the way. He's bringing on Odegaard. I, I, would, I think you just give him the night off now. I wouldn't even do it. Uh, Usman said, you can celebrate anything if you're shameless enough. You can. Lone Havertz out to Germany January 1st, says White Glove. I'd be in favour of that Leverkusen season-long loan. Mr. Rosé, now you can see our Arteta is our Brendan Rodgers. Potentially, definitely could be. Jay, thank you for the super sticker. And uh, Faye said, imagine I stopped my Uber work for this BS. Keep working, bro. They ain't, they ain't doing nothing. You might as well earn some wages. Jared Bowen up front. The man's not even a striker. Been running our defence ragged, by the way. Tommy, they have, they've kicked us all over the pitch. Moyes knew, you know. Moyes said, listen, lads. Let he said, listen, boys, you know. I know we've lost three games in a row and, and, and form's been poor lately, but this is only Mikel Arteta. I used to coach him at Everton. He wasn't that great as a player. There's no VAR, so go and kick them. They won't want to know, lads. They won't want to know... And look, here's Eddie and Ketty. Oh, oh. oh, they said he proved me wrong with the hat trick. He can't kick the ball. Look at Jared Bowen up front. He's playing like Christian Vieri, although he just kicked the ball out of play. Oh, dear. It's crazy. Not a bad accent, you know. Somewhere in Glasgow, I think. Wow. This, oh, he brings Eddie off. Norbit's off. Not your professor tonight, mate. Absolute shambolic performance. Oh, he scored a hat trick. He's brilliant. Sheffield United. Let's give him a new deal. Nah, mate. He's a mid table at best. Donny, I've been telling, man. I don't even know if West Ham would be desperate to get him. Antonio might be better. I don't know. Like, come on. You've got at least six players in this team that need selling. Havertz, Jorginho, Cedric, Elneny, and Ketio. Fabio ain't doing nothing either. Like, come on, man. These bang average players getting nicking a living at Arsenal. Saka gives it away. The substitutions were a waste of time. Absolutely no point. They're on us again. They, they still don't think it's enough. They want to inflict more pain. Kudos. Anyone going to go to him? Shoots. Oh, goes right. Look, they shoot. They're shooting from 30 yards out. But in the first half, we're 25 yards out. We're refusing to shoot. Have we actually had a shot on target in this half? Deflection goes wide. Corner. This is, oh, my days. This is wild. Apparently, Bournemouth have equalised against Liverpool. Can you imagine? If Liverpool get knocked out, Man United knocked out, then you end up with what? Chelsea, Newcastle. Ah, oh, dear. Unknown T, you're bang on. If you speak against certain players in, you know, oh, it's an agenda. Oh, you've got, oh, give him time. Bond that. If they're good enough, they're good enough. We respect them. We support them. We support even the bad ones. But when they're consistently playing bad, what do you want me to do? What am I supposed to do? I'll say it as it is, people. I told you there's other channels that will give you buttercups and roses and running through the field and they'll tell you Havertz will be great in two years. I'm not on that. Get rid of him. He's rubbish. Ball whipped in, goes all the way across. I'm not on that. This is Arsenal Football Club. We're moving like small fries. Nah, nah, nah. Paquetta's... He's trying to do... I'm do I, I should end the stream. 
He's doing rainbow flicks over fa over Fabio's head. I have to tweet. He's doing JJ Acocha rainbow flick. Paquette are doing rainbow flicks. They don't respect us. It's all mad. They don't respect us, man. Moisey said, listen, lads, these guys hear me. They they got no power. They got no power. Here's Declan Rice. Oh, <laughs> God. Oh, there's a comedy act. It is an actual comedy act, I'm telling you. Man is doing rainbow flicks. Look, our fans are going. Hey, you just, oh, They're going to hate me on Twitter tonight. They're going to despise me on there. They are going to absolutely hate what I say on there. Bozo, Big Gabby re-emerged tonight. Yeah, the gene got, you know, he tapped in. Big up white glove. Mr. Cool Bush Dry, I'm vomiting up that humble pie. Brother, I tell you, you know. You went too early, bro. I'm telling you. About humble. Eddie, no, nah, there ain't no humble pie on Eddie, bro. That brother, that brother. Come on, man. Even a broken clock's right twice a day. Remember that saying? And the broken clock was right on um, on Saturday for Eddie, but it's still broken. Liverpool 2-1 up. Liverpool will win this competition now. Wow. I can't believe what I've watched tonight. Honestly, I can't believe they have made me watch this. Chelsea are 2-0 up against Blackburn, Badi Ashili and Sterling. Liverpool 2-1 up. Gapo and Nunez. Everton 2-0 up. Tarkovsky and Anana. Man United losing 2-0 at half-time. Almiron and Lewis Hall. But the one, you know, this performance is giving me 2020 vibes. Says, Can't, trust me, this was all or nothing documentary vibes. Just end this game, please. Six minutes to go. Look. Yeah. Just get it over with. I need to watch NBA or something. <laughs> Trust me, I need to watch NBA or sort of who's playing tonight. This is a joke. I don't want nothing to do with football the rest of the week. Celtics Pacers at half 11. That could be a good one. I need to watch something else. I don't want nothing to do with football. I want to know who said that transfer window was an 8 out of 10. I need people to reveal themselves. <laughs> Our squad is an absolute bucket of poo, and that is all down to Arteta. His talent ID is awful. He has wasted over a hundred million on squaddies who are rubbish. Fitz, Fitz, tell him, tell him, Fitz, let the clip off. Some of these men are rubbish. I don't want to hear. Give him time. Fabio, bin him. Garbage. Weak. He ain't making it in the Premier League. 35 million, you've wasted it. Get what you can and sell him. Havertz is shocking. Get him on loan to Leverkusen with an option to buy. Just stop, stop waiting. You ain't getting nothing. There's nothing going to turn up. You're at a bus stop that they don't use anymore. It ain't turning up. Get him out. Big on my brother Fran in the chat, people. I'm telling you now, Eddie is a waste of time at this. If you think Eddie's going to lead us to trophies, you're wild. I don't care about the hat trick. I don't care about the England call-up. I don't care about the celebration. Call me, call me. Your phone has got no credit. You've got no signal. You've got no Wi-Fi connection. The Bluetooth don't work. The charger's dodgy. You have to move it to a certain angle to get it to charge. It ain't happening. It ain't happening, bro. It ain't happening. I'm 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 sick of it. I told man, I, I I went through wars on Twitter about Jorginho. I said, what kind of idiot signing is this? He's washed up at Chelsea. Why do we think this guy's gonna start balling at Arsenal? He can't run. He's weak. He runs like he's got a caravan on his back. The Premier League, you've got to be an athlete. Unless you're exceptional on the ball, you ain't getting away with it. We put corners in. We go up for fair headers. They're fouling our goalkeeper. There's no VAR. Dark hearts. Here's Martinelli against Kuva. Four minutes to go. Just please get this game over with. 
No trophies incoming. No, mate, according to the fan base, we'll win the Champions League. That's what man are telling me. We've got five world-class players, apparently. Odegaard shoots. Fabianski saves it. Well, at least he had a shot. At least he had a shot. Um, I'm pretty sure that's the first shot on target, second off. I told you, I'm convinced we're in the Truman Show. I'm waiting for Jim Carrey and the cameraman to pop out. It, it ain't normal being an Arsenal fan. It's not normal. It's definitely an experiment to see how they can affect your mood, you know? Beat Man City, then go to... Look, at Paqueta's flicking the ball over people's head. Kudos against Tommy Asu. He's, been, he's probably been man of the match. Typical, isn't it? A guy we apparently was going to sign. Got to be fit. You got to be an athlete. If you ain't an athlete in midfield, right, you better be exceptional on the ball, like, and and be able to let the ball do your running. Not this brother. We turned up today with a midfield of Jorginho, Kai Havertz, and Fabio Vieira. Are you taking the mick? Are you serious? Jorginho is washed. He is finished. He cannot play top-level Premier League. Havertz is a disgraceful signing. And Fabio, he, he ain't doing nothing in this league. Not a damn thing. And this manager will PR it and the, the fanboys will go on Twitter and, oh, you need time. They'll all, go on, they'll all go on Twitter tonight. They'll cry about the penalty. That's all they're going to say. Go on Twitter tonight. They'll all be talking about, oh, Ramsdale was fouled. He was. Get on with it. Get on with it. Why didn't Ben White head the ball away? Then it don't matter that he was fouled. That's all they're going to say. Oh, Ramsdale, it was a foul. We knew there was no VAR. So why don't we mix it up a little bit? But they'll say, oh, you're, it's a real, oh, you're overreacting. It's only the Carabao Cup. And then they'll go, it's only the FA Cup. Oh, now we can concentrate on the Premier League. Yeah, the Premier League. Yeah, the Premier League, Man City. Let's see Let's see how January goes. I remember that January. When that window closed, I said, that window ain't winning us the title. Kivior ain't ready for first-team football at that point last season. I said, Jorginho's a rubbish signing. And I said, Trossard's a good squad player. I remember I said Trossard was like getting five pairs of socks at Christmas. And you can see it. He's useful, but there's no, there ain't real excitement there. Jared Bowen, he's not even a striker. This guy's roughing us up. He's got cut eye. He's got. Ah like... oh, dear. This is oh. I I really anybody who hasn't watched the game tonight, any Arsenal fan who hasn't had to watch the game, I'm pleased for you that you haven't had to watch this. I'm pleased that you haven't had to watch this rubbish. Suchek fouled by Fabio Vieira. Can't wait to hear what Arteta says. I'm actually very, very disappointed. I might be in a minority, but it's not even the fact that we've lost. It's you haven't even put up a fight, bro. You can't go to them levels of being that bad. You can't be that bad. West Ham haven't done anything special tonight, people. Nothing special. Own goal is just a corner whipped in. You flicked it into your own net. The second goal is fantastic. That's the best moment of quality in the game. Kudus, great first touch, whips it in the bottom corner. The third one is absolutely shambolic defended. You head the ball straight out to the edge of your own box. And he volleys it in. He's unmarked, gets a deflection. And the goalkeeper does not cover himself in glory. You've embarrassed yourself. Absolutely let the club down tonight, the players and the manager. Simple as that. They have let themselves down and they have let the fans down. It's as simple as that. People can say it's only the Carabao Cup. Pep wouldn't put up with that. You can't go to them. When you're bad, you've still got to be solid and work hard and be difficult to beat. We've been battered. We've gone to West Ham and got tumped all over the place. Five minutes added on. We're already a minute and 20 in. Get this game over with. Mayer says Ben White, goal and an assist. He's, yeah, man of the match for West Ham. Headed the ball straight to Jared Bowen. Maybe he thought he was on international duty. 
Only trophy he's leading us to is the Johnston's paint. Big up concept. Um, only one player wearing 14 tonight deserves that number, and he's not playing in that luminous mistake of a kit. Crazy. Who is the number 14 for um, West Ham? Lay said, this is why Arteta doesn't like rotating. You can't trust this team once we rotate. You're right. You're right. But the argument against him would be you signed a lot. Oh, Kudus was the 14. I get it. The argument will be, bro, you signed most of these players. So the, the squad players you don't trust, he bought them. You know what I mean? It's like going to a supermarket, buying food, and then... When your missus cooks it, you say, I don't even like that. You're like, what the hell did you buy it for? Well, I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? It don't make sense. Buy something that you, you can rock with, you know? Blame the kit. It's too bright. Uh, Marcus said, it's the manager, Curtis. He needs to be sacked. Going to be a long season, man. I, I'm, I, trust me, this is me trying to keep calm about the manager. If you notice, I haven't even gone that crazy about the manager. There's, there's things floating around my mind right now. I'm telling you. There, there's, there's, there's things that I'm thinking um, about, you know, do I have to start making thumbnails or take her out new season? I don't know. It's too early. Let's not be reactionary, but I'm not happy. I'm really not happy. We've been absolutely bullied. At no point in this game have we looked like scoring. Here's Fabio Vieira. Passes it out wide. He wins a free kick. Two minutes to go. How has that guy played 90 minutes? I'll never know. Brian said, I don't understand what people see in Arteta. He's average at best. Harrison said, Mikel Rogers, he needs to go. Francis says, Pepe or Kai Havertz. Pepe every single day of the week. Every day of the and I and, and Pepe wasn't even a big success. He was a hundred times better than this guy. Hundred times better. Um, free kick to Arsenal. Odegaard, we're in the 94th minute. There's a minute to go. I cannot wait for this game to finish. It is an absolute disgrace of a performance. Um, if he scores this, I will not celebrate one bit because it means nothing. Curtis, stay calm. We're in phase one. <laughs> Here we go. Fabio's trying to get on the free kick. Odegaard's going to take it, and it doesn't go in. It doesn't even get over the wall. 40 seconds to go. Can't wait for this game to finish. They've bullied us. They're still hunting us down. Saka, 2v1. They're going to clamp him. Just get it in the box. See if something... Nah, that's a waste of a ball. Just get this game over with. Concept said, I don't get paid enough to keep venting on Super Chats. Whoever brought tickets to the football got tickets to a comedy show. Done with these players. Crazy. Abs Listen, like I said, thank you. we still got 4,000 people locked in. 64 on Twitch as well. Big up the whole C unit. You've kept it locked. Uh, I wouldn't have blamed you for leaving at half time. Seriously. Here we go. Odegaard's in the area. Scores. Odegaard scores. 3-1. If he's in your fantasy team, well done. You got a few points. We ain't celebrating. There's no expression being made. It means nothing. He scores with... I think there was 10 seconds left. Decent finish. See what happens when you actually have a shot at the keeper? Means nothing. Mavropanos probably let it go through his legs. Fabianski probably let it in. Sympathy penalty. Uh, Full-time whistle goes. Worst performance of the season. There's going to be grenades on Twitter tonight, and uh, what do you want me to say? Arteta got taught a lesson by the guy who apparently taught him so much about management, David Moyes. You got done by Moisey. You got done by David Moyes tonight, my friend. Absolutely shambolic from the manager. We need an investigation in the Kai Havertz deal, said Zamir. Uh, bro, people should be getting locked up for that. It's the worst signing I've seen. Potent said, Big C, would it be fair to say both keepers are stinky right now? Quick question, who stinks more? And you know how I feel about Artel. That game didn't go well for Ramsdale. Shot straight at him. He palms it into his own net. That ain't going to help. Theo said, no shame in losing to European champions. Bro, we signed their best player and we still got done. 
So Mia said, oh no, he read that one. Flight mode, I, have to, I hate to say it, but we might miss Granite Xhaka. I mean, <sighs> the problem is, Rice was brought in to replace Xhaka, but cause, uh, cause, because Partey's always injured, he's now replaced Thomas Partey, and now we don't have a replacement for 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 granite you know we got lensed by the hammers says johnny 100 percent. they deserve to win let's give some credit to west ham they were superb ran all over us absolutely ran us ragged they never stopped working which is what you get out of a david moyes team they will run and run and run and make life difficult for you and they did they deserve to win the game that is the worst performance of the season we deserve to lose um we were soft. It was a typical Arsenal performance from probably two years ago when we was finishing eight, three years ago. Um, I mean, I'm looking at the team. I'm thinking, is there anybody I can give some credit to? I'd say Nelson was decent in the first half. Second half, he went quiet and then he dragged him. Ramsdale didn't cover himself in glory at all. Ben White, poor. Goal and an assist for West Ham. Kivio was, I mean, he was average. Gabriel, I thought, was shaky. Zinchenko was all right on the ball defensively, was poor. Jorginho, awful. Havertz, awful. Fabio Vieira, awful. Nelson did well first half, second half, quiet. Trossard was poor. And Ketio was awful. And the subs didn't really make a difference. You made the subs too late. So where do we go from here? I'm concerned. Newcastle are currently 2 0 up at Old Trafford. So their confidence right now, if they win this game, gets a massive boost. We've had a tough night. We've got to go to Newcastle on the weekend. Am I confident now of that game? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. 5 30 kickoff at Newcastle after. And they're another very physical team. Now, I know we weren't at full stretch tonight. You know, we had a weaker team out. But th some of these guys, you're going to need to rely on these at some stage. It's a big problem. Wow, Alfred's coming in with a crazy super chat here, bro. He said, sell Saka. Wow. He said, most fullbacks have good games against him. When was the last time he said Saka ripped somebody? Kudos, Bruno, um, Gramirez, Diaby, Madison, all would have cost Havertz, Vieira and Eddie money. This team is weak. I'm going to be honest. I'm not going for Saka. Saka's not in good form right now. But I'm I'm concentrating on further down the ladder. I think you put better players around Saka, you get a better Saka, you know. But uh, listen, he does need to perform at a higher level. But that's I think we've got bigger problems than Saka. Um, but I appreciate the super chat. Hype said, "Spend big this January. Forget about financial fair play. Pay the fines." I'm sure the Cronkays won't see it like that. George said, what's the difference between Arsenal and a teabag? The teabag can stay in the cup for longer. <laughs> Big up, George. Yeah, man, it's... Ugh, I'm so disappointed. Honestly, there'll be a lot of people. You'll go on other channels. You'll see people online. They'll say, it's the Carabao Cup. I'm not that bothered. And fair play, everyone's entitled to their opinion. It's football, and football is a game of opinions. I don't agree with it. Um, I think Arsenal need to start winning trophies. I, I think I think there needs to be a reality check at Arsenal about how good some of our players are or aren't. Because there's a lot of bang average players in this Arsenal squad. Maybe not the strongest starting eleven team, but in this squad there is some bang average players who are ripping the club off. And the problem is the fan base, the big accounts they don't call them out. So when Arsenal go online, which they do, people told me this in America, they go online, they look at big media accounts and see what the feeling is. When they sign Jorginho instead of Caicedo in January and big accounts are justifying it, saying, oh, not nominated for Ballon d'Or, good on the ball, blah, blah, blah. They go, oh, guess what? We got away with that, spending 12 million instead of 80 million. And when they sign Kai Havertz and people are saying, give him time, you don't see what he does off the ball, he wins jewels, they go, we've got away with that. But really, the fan base should be in meltdown saying, we know that Kai Havertz is a rubbish signing. 
and none of us want him here. We'll support him in a shirt, but we know that ain't going to work. And Fabio Vieira's in his second season and he ain't doing nothing at this football club, so why are we sticking with it? Why not move him out the door? Lukonga came to Arsenal, Cleary wasn't good enough, binned him out on loan. Tavares, binned him out on loan. But what, I'm supposed to sit here for three years seeing if Havertz can make it work, seeing if Fabio Vieira can make it work. They're not good enough. Get rid of them and move on. You've got it wrong. So we'll see. We will see. Like I said, a lot of people will say it's only the Carabao Cup, but why, why as an Arsenal fan would you not want to win a trophy? Why would you not want to go to Wembley and see your team against a Liverpool, a Newcastle, a Chelsea and win a competition? We're in four competitions. You've just thrown the easiest one to win out the window. So now you're down to three. I can tell you now we ain't winning the Champions League. Forget it. Get as far as you can in that competition and we'll get somebody will deal with us. Away at Napoli or away at Real Madrid or against Bayern Munich in the Allianz. There's going to be a night we get dealt with and knocked out of that. And the Premier League, listen, I don't believe we can get to the level that Man City are at with this current squad. So as far as I'm concerned, FA Cup is the last thing that we can win. Um, so... Yeah, you know, I, I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm too old school, people. Maybe the Carabao Cup does mean nothing. But to me, that tonight was an absolute disgrace. That's the worst performance I've seen all season. And some of those players should be out of the door in January. Forget bringing players in. Get rid of some of this dross that we've got at the club. Because they are awful. And they are nicking a living at this football club. Some of them players are absolutely shocking. And I don't care if he scored in a Champions League. I don't care if he played in a, a Euros winning Italian team. They are awful. Get them out the door. I don't want to see stats. We know the eye test. Eddie scored a hat trick. Well done. You're not good enough. Still not interested, mate. You, you, you still should be going. But it is what it is. We are where we are, people. I'm not, I told you, I'm not, I'm not interested in processes and phases. We've sat here for four years watching this and seeing where it's going. I don't know where it's going. We look worse than last season. So if we don't continue to progress, surely we have to start looking and going, has this manager reached his ceiling? Can he go any higher than this? This is the question I would ask to every Arsenal fan. Do you believe that Mikel Arteta can go higher than what he achieved last season? A title challenge and finishing second. If you believe he can... Fair enough, you continue with it. If you don't believe he can, then my question is, what are we waiting for? What what are we do we just want to keep finishing top four? The problem you've got is I think we've got an ownership model that are happy if Arsenal get Champions League for the next four years. Because all the money comes rolling back, the sponsorships get bigger, more games, more um sellout crowds at the Emirates, the money comes rolling in. I've said it before, I don't believe the Cronkies are desperate to win the title or the Champions League. It's not just about spending money. An owner who has a genuine knowledge of football would not allow his manager to spend £65 million on Havertz. If, imagine any one of you owned Arsenal and Mikel Arteta rings you up and says, I want to sign Kai Havertz for £65 million. You're going to say, bro... I can't, I can't sign that one off. I can't do that. That's too much money for a player that has not done anything for three years. I can't sign that off. I want you to sign an informed player that is going to come and push the level up of this team. Um, it's, 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 after last season, the biggest thing I wanted Arsenal to do was continue pushing. Try and break down barriers. Try and bridge that gap. I'm concerned that despite spending 210 million, it feels like we've taken one step backwards. You know, and we're lucky at the moment that Chelsea still look a mess. Man United look a mess. Tottenham don't look a mess. Do you know what I mean? Man City don't look a mess. Big game on Saturday, Newcastle. I know I'm a bit fearful of that game right now. They're going to be confident. They're in the next round. I'm so disappointed we've been knocked out. Um, but it is what it is. Let me read out these super chats before I round up. Um, Young Gunner says, um, I got a lot of heat from mates when I said after squad isn't up to par, especially the squad players. 
at least six or seven players are poor. You wait for Champions League, please. Yeah, yeah exactly, bro. Exactly. Fit said, uh, cue the boatload of excuses from the Arteta fans. They'll be online, mate. You'll find plenty of them. Uh, Alfred said, Ramsdale to go. Couldn't do anything about those goals. Trying to save the third when you're in a position to and it takes a deflection in the rain. I'll be honest, I think he should have done better, Alfred, uh, on the last one. I know you're a fan of Ramsdale. First two, I don't blame him. The third one, I think reaction, you tip that wide, but maybe I'm being harsh. Concept said you'd hang up the phone and block him. Ima like, imagine, clearly the Cronkays don't know football because they just signed it off. And Char said, uh, without Odegaard running and yelling, there's no fight. And Cliff said, big accounts, call the names, Bredrin. Uh Now they're just saying, come by oh, to the club, I wanted this trophy. Bro, as fans, of course we wanted trophies. Of course we wanted trophies, but didn't look like the manager did tonight with that team selection. He didn't even make substitutions at 2-0. People, I am out of here. Thank you very much for tuning in. I really appreciate you staying locked in because I would have understood if you'd have just ended it and left because that was that was boys against men. Honestly, that was an absolute shambolic performance. Arsenal therapy will be tomorrow. I'm going to be doing it in the evening tomorrow because I'm out in the day visiting family. So it will be around maybe 7, 8 o'clock tomorrow night. But we will do it. Um, so make sure you lock in for that. That's going to need, you know, that will not be for the faint-hearted. Let me tell you, the clip will be unloaded during that one people it ain't gonna be nice uh, so make sure you tune in for that it'll be an evening stream tomorrow keep your notification bell on make sure you like the video and subscribe arsenal go crashing out of the carabao cup beaten three nil hammered by the hammers apparently we got bigger fish to fry and we don't want to win this trophy anyway some people think we're going to win the champions league and um, by the way before i leave Man United are 3-0 down now, but I can't even take joy in that. Joe Willock, big him up. See you tomorrow, people. Arsenal Therapy, 7pm. Bless.